How was your week, brother, man? My week was pretty good. You know what I'm saying? It was, you know, I got a lot of activities done, you know, ran around, did a lot of errands, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So this was a really productive week for me as far as things that I had to do. And, oh. you know, I just had my, my favorite for dinner. I had Spanish burgers. So I'm ready. Oh, to oh what's the what's the Spanish burger? Oh. <laughs> Spanish, burger, burger? Spanish burgers in my house. There's Spanish burgers and there's black burgers. Spanish oh, burgers. Shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I got the, Spanish, the Spanish burgers are seasoned with adobo, and the black burgers are seasoned with Lowry's. Right. That's yeah. That's Spanish different. burgers, brother. I know about the Spanish burgers. <laughs> so we have Spanish oh, burgers tonight. Shit. So I'm good with that. You know? Yo, you don't, you don't have Lowry's. Lowry's, on Lowry's in a black house, household is a must. It's like, you know, and Rob, remember back in the day? Remember we see chicken fish? Chicken fish? Yeah, that's right. That? That's right. A lot of people don't know what chicken fish is, though. They don't. They don't know. They don't know what that's the down south. Thing. Yeah, this down south. So we, we, we used to fry the grease and put it in a cup. Maybe it used to be like a Maxwell House or a Folgers or some kind of metal container. And you mm. put the fish grease, put chicken grease in that shit, let oh, it yeah, cool that's down. Grandma, and grandma put all, yeah, that's what she put a cooking grease in that little, yeah, in that little yeah, chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, chocolate yeah. nuts. That, that, that's chicken grease. Yeah, that's Correct. chicken grease. Chicken yeah. fish. That's chicken Fish. Chicken fish, yeah, okay, the thing yeah, is, yeah. or you go down south, yeah. they got that witch pot, they fry the fish and the chicken in the same grease, fish grease, chicken grease, chicken fish. <laughs> there you go. Right. It's, it's delicious. It is delicious. It's delicious. Cholesterol, high blood pressure will be up, but you know, it works. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I remember, I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, yo, you're going to fry that chicken in that same fish grease? They were like, yes. watch, guys. <laughs> this is going to change your life. Change and it did. Life. <laughs> and, and, and it changed my cholesterol rate, but it's yeah, all right. Yeah, too, yeah, yeah. yeah, Kelvin, yeah. Kelvin what, man, what's up with your week, man? Sorry about that, Rod. What's up with now your, your, your blood? Your blood looking like motor oil, you know. My, <laughs> <laughs> my week was very, very eventful. You know why? Uh oh. Because again, having to deal with the natives. That's why. And Maybe. I'm gonna just yes. <laughs> So I had a fire in July, and right now my house is um, uninhabitable. So, you know, there's some debris in the yard, but I have some things that are of value in the yard. And one of them is my Red Bull machine. The reason I didn't move it in the garage, because I'm thinking because it's about 350 pounds, nobody could possibly steal it. But I underestimated the power of Ray Ray and Pookie. And yes, yes, I said it. Yes, because whoever I'm talking about, you know them too in your family. Yeah. And I come outside and the whole Red Bull machine is gone. Now, you cannot move this by yourself. I've moved it a million times myself with two or three grown men and a hand truck and have to put it in a truck. I looked and the machine is gone. And what I find so interesting, the one at Walmart out in front is still there. The one in front of all the white establishments is still there. Oh, no. But my people, in the time of solidarity, go take my machine. And yes, I'm tired of the foolishness. And I want to reiterate, I'm writing a book called My People Don't Know How to Act. <laughs> For Christmas, I'm coming out with the sequel. My people still don't know how to act. So yes, I, my, that's how my week went, and yes, I'm tight about it, and yes, I have an attitude about it. And I know what people are gonna say, people are gonna say, how do you know it was black people that stole it? The same way you know, it's just not politically <laughs> correct to say it. But we'll be right back after this. <laughs> that's how it is. It's all right, you know. But uh, and good luck to the brothers out there with my new Red Bull machine that you probably took to try to take it to some scrap yard and get about eight dollars for it. I appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much. I, I know who took it. I know who took it. It's who, the two guys, the same two guys that stole a cash machine in the barbershop. It's the same two dudes. Or, but see, people don't understand the crackhead muscle. The crackhead, two things crackhead. When you smoke yes. crack, you get superhuman Listen. strength yep. and you know how and, and you know how to work on cars. They like right. ants. They live 20 times wait. That's right. People, times, people, that's right. people become a mechanic overnight. It's something about the once the pipe hits them lip, yeah, you know yeah, how to work yeah. on all type of German cars. Yeah, yeah. type of domestic yeah. cause, yeah. and you get superhuman strength. It's yeah. better than spinach. Popeye right. should have smoked uh, smoked crack than spinach. Should have really, yeah. should really smoked crack. He would have been, he been a, a, you know, yeah, a crackhead. Yeah, a, a crackhead is the hood superhero. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Are there any new crackheads, though? We got to ask that question. I, I should yeah. hope not at this point. Nah, ain't, ain't no new nah. crackhead. The nah, only thing you get now is a... 
Yeah, they can do crackers. Crackers, that's the thing. They can paint. They can do all kind of wonderful shit. They can fly them all. They were just, crackers was different. Better crackers. <laughs> they, were, they, were, they just had a skill set on smoking crack. I'm, I'm sorry if I feel yeah. anybody had uh, family members that smoked crack before. But we, all had, on, we all got We all had a crackhead. We all got a crackhead. You know, so, you already know. Yo, you know, you know what the funniest thing is? When you hear another crackhead call a crackhead a crackhead. Oh, yeah. That's the, oh, that's yeah. the funniest thing. Yeah, Yo. yeah. Yeah. I saw him. I saw him take the bike out of your yard. It was a crackhead, and the guy's telling you, he, and he's a crackhead as no. He's a crackhead. Yeah, right. And you, probably, you. you right. Yeah, you. You. Uh, you probably yeah. submitted crackheads on the job. Right. So, no. let me, I. I uh, seen. I seen some. I seen some serious crackhead, professional crackhead. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but to you're right. Today, today, like finding a crackhead today is like finding a unicorn in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's, it's, yeah. You don't see him as much no more. No, nah, no. Nah, but they would. Like they. We got, more yeah, cover, yeah. we got more functional crackheads. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might, yeah, you're right about more, that. Yeah. Functional crackheads. But what's the drug yeah. now? The drug now is really like what heroin is back. Like heroin, right? the kids pop, the kids pop pills. That's the burden, yeah, all, right? all the new, vaping, all the new, all the new, yeah, all the new asshole weed that smell like asshole. Um, you know that that kind of stuff. Like I mean, we smoke better weed back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Look, it's better weed. This new weed that smell like underarms. It's just like yeah. it ain't the good weed. I wouldn't. I, it's hard. Spe speaking of that, do we have any sponsors? Uh, Ryan, <laughs> we have any no. <laughs> Calvin, I was hoping you wasn't going to ask me that. <laughs> His name <laughs> is <laughs> Calvin. <laughs> we tried to beg that sponsor to come back. That sponsor said, no, not right now. Oh, man. Yeah, oh, I don't, man. I don't know. yeah, yeah. We're going to keep it real on the show. I mean, the sponsor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Nigga yeah. said it's Molly. Yeah, she said they smoking Molly. They're coming back. Molly. They're yeah, Molly. Yeah, Molly. yeah, Molly. Molly, new thing. Molly. Yeah. So that's that's like, Molly. Molly. You knew that count. You knew that. You knew it was a wrap for that sponsor after that. I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> yeah. but you I saw it online when it was confirmed, though. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm, working on a, I'm working on the relationship. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to uh, therapy for my, the words that come out of my mouth. So. I'm working on. It. Trust, trust me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm working on my mouth. But um, like, we, like that's so funny. Like we're talking about this now, like the weed and all, like uh, stuff like that. When did you guys start realizing y'all got old? Like you know, oh. Derek. Oh, when did you, when, Derek? When did you realize you started getting old? Oh man, when I started saying things like my father, man, I started feeling like my father, looking like my father, man. You know what I mean? Mm. I think that's what I just realized. I, said, I don't know if I'm old, but um, yeah. I'm old. I was on this grade, man. I, you know, I started dying. I started little, it's little things, you know what I mean? It's, you know, you first time you try to run ball or something with the young dudes, you find out real quick how old you are. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Try to run a little ball. Oh, ain't no full court at this point. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> ain't, 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 ain't no half court. It's, 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 ain't no, no half, half court, court no more. That's right. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's in the paint court. You got to be in the paint court. No, I can't. I ain't no more slapping back balls, touching them, none of that. Ain't doing none of that, man. So, I come off the bench in one game. How about you, Kevin? When you started for realizing you got old, man? I, I'm gonna tell you when. When the when the uh opening credits of this ran and I saw my goatee. Um <laughs> yeah, I you know, cause let me tell you something. My my joint is being gentrified. All of the blacks are moving out, uh, and all of the whites <laughs> is moving in. So that's when, that's when that's when I knew. And I was like, who, who is that? It was going. So that was, you know, Yo. I had to myself. Yo, that, that yeah. was good. That was good. Rod, how about yourself, man? Ah, oh, man, I got a different story, man. Yo, I knew I was getting old when I couldn't piss no more. I only tinkle now. <laughs> I used to be able to pee from one side of the street to the other. Now I, I can barely hit my feet right now. You know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, I don't know what happened. But, yo, pissing is a thing of the past for me. Now I just tinkle. You know? Oh, my gosh. Oh yeah, my yeah. Yo. There's some, there's, some, there's some things that even though I still, you know, I know I'm getting older, I, I still won't do it. And I won't embrace it as an old man. I'm not oh, yeah. tucking, I'm still not tucking my shirt in. Oh hell! I'm not. Oh, I'm not putting. I'm not gonna put my money in my pocket in my wallet anymore. Right. And I'm not wearing no socks and sandals together. Oh no! Nah, nah. You wear socks and sandals together, man. You it's better start. You better yeah, start barbecuing right. wherever you are. You in the mall? Barbecue. You got the barbecue. You got the barbecue. You got a barbecue wherever you at. You wear yeah, socks yeah. and sandals. You got a. You got a barbecue. That's the yeah, only yeah. thing. Yeah. You need barbecue, right? You got a barbecue on the grill. You got a barbecue on the grill. 
And you, and you better have, and you better have a cigarette hanging out your mouth with an ass in the fucking You so got a got a bar. The worst bar. thing to me, the worst thing to me so far, and I tell young men this: the worst thing you have to look forward to is the dreadful prostate exam. Oh, and that's when you know because I don't care. Ain't gonna do it. And I had a doctor. I, I think so. I had to question the doctor. I had. I had to get rid of him because I don't care what was wrong with you. It ended up like that. I'm talking about Doc. My arm hurt. All right, you know the routine. Turn around. I'm like, oh, man. I just came for a consultation. <laughs> you know, look, man. Your, like, your, real, your real problem is you start reaching around the front. You be like, wait a minute. <laughs> Yo, I got good. I got good news. Yeah. What's that? Bro? I got good news. They don't have to do it no more like that. You yeah, can take a blood test. Blood yeah, yeah, you can do a blood test. You know, no more. Know. Thank you for how long it's been since I've been to the doctor. Thank you. I appreciate that. We could have talked about that. <laughs> no, that no, more doctors, no more doctors with big fingers. No more. Wait, hold on. I went last year and they did that. I see what's going on. Hey, 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 you might got a Jeffrey, Jeffrey Epstein type of doctor. You went last year. You put a finger in the whole new, whole new oh, R. Kelly ass doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was, he was my doctor. And, and why the doctors that do the prostate check always got the biggest hands? Why? Yo, why is, you know, like, they be like six five, like massive hands. That's what. The dude be, they look like they got the pictures mid on. That yeah. wasn't the problem. The exam is not the problem. It's no, the exam is the problem. Afterwards, afterwards, my man, like, here, yeah, uh, wipe yourself off, and now we're gonna talk. I don't want to talk. I don't want to see no more. <laughs> You know what I'm like, we're we we gonna talk like nothing just happened. Like, I want yeah. to Yo, listen, listen, when I had to get the colonoscopy, and that doctor put like gel in my ass, I told him he and I are dating now. Because I, <laughs> I, I woke up, my joint was, uh, I, ain't, I, 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 had, I, had to, I had to wop, I had to wet ass. You know, that's how I felt like. You know what I'm saying? You were dinner after a man. Oh, damn, God, man. man, that was the most violent. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. We this is why, we, this why we can't get no sponsors. This is exactly. Oh why. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I'm gonna stop. I say I'm gonna rehab. Real, I'm real, real, no, no, but no, no, no. The crazy thing, when like I have a bad hip, right? And, 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 the, and I'm gonna tell you, and the way, and I'm old because the hip, the hip was always acting up. I had to get a shot in my hip last week, and the D, way I got this, yo, D, tell them how you hurt that hip. No, this, this, this is all, this is all truth. I ain't telling a lie on this story. So it, was, it was a hot August summer. This is a long time ago. Remember, this is this happened a while back. So when everything I say, this was a while. It was back. A while ago, it was a long time ago. Yeah. Long, long, long time ago. <laughs> so it was a hot August night, and everybody that knows me, I like vanilla shakes. I like ice cream. So I went out. So only place is midnight at night, and I was going to see my my girlfriend and my wife. They let me have right. So I was trying to <laughs> come from work. I was going to see my. So I said, let me go get a shake. So I'll be nice and cool, and I go. So we on the phone, I'm arguing, whatever, right? And everybody's from Queens and from South Jamaica, Queens, the White Castle on Rockway Boulevard. And I'm trying to turn into this White Castle. Now, next to the White Castle is this bowling alley, 360 lanes or whatever it's called, something like that, the bowling alley. And when you have to turn to it, you have to come in front of oncoming traffic. So it was a taxi cab. And anybody's from New York, you know, we got gypsy cabs, they stop in the street, dollar cabs, whatever. <laughs> so the cab didn't go all the way into the driveway because it's crowded, a whole bunch of teenagers out there for a party or whatever. And he stops, and now I'm caught in oncoming traffic. The cars are coming. Now remember, this is a long time ago, right? So I, I'm trying to look fresh. I got my Gucci's on. I got a Bluetooth with the blue light. That's how old I am. The flashing joint, the uncle, the uncle Bluetooth that hang right here on your joint. That's how flashing, is, right? So I blow the horn to the young boy. It's a young boy now. The young boy guess he got upset with me that I blew the horn at him because he's trying to pick a passenger. I drive around because the parking lot's full. Whoever knows this parking lot's full. And I had to park on the side street and that expedition. So I get out of my expedition. I'm trying to walk into the White Castle. The, the young boy driving the, uh, the cab stand. The, these are Dominican, Dominican cab stands. So I'm going to put a little accent in. No racism. I need these sponsors. Adobo, <laughs> Goya, you know, all of them, all of that. You know what I'm saying? I, I want the Coquito sponsors coming up. You know, we get in the holiday season. We want all of that. Yeah. So I walk up to the joint. And the guy comes up to me, pulls up hard. <laughs> He said, yo, old man, why you blowing the horn at me? Why don't you see him trying to pick up? I said, I didn't know he was talking to me, so I kept walking. So he pulls up closer. The young boy decides to call me all type of names, and the old people, the young people say, yo, he's trying to punk the old man. I'm like, they call the old man. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? So, so I start screaming at the crowd like, I'm not fucking old. Like, I'm not old. So the young boy's like, fuck you, old man. And the people's like, yo, old man is off the hook. 
So the young boy decide he gonna come out and come out with a stick to whip my ass. So, and anybody know me, I got a quick temper. So first thing I do is I put these black hands against his cheekbone. Smack! <laughs> so oh. I knock that young dude, I smack him, right? That, you know with the go Dave Chappelle's with the hands into the face smack. So that's why I saw, that's why I smacked them, right? So now the young people are yelling, yo, the old man got hard, the old man got nice hands. And I'm yelling at the crowd, fuck y'all, I'm not old, right? I'm not an old so an old white man start with his son, like, I told you, stop fucking with them old men. I'm like, bro. You know, you, right? you know, I said, but the young boy's like, why you smack me? He pulled off, right? It is over. My ass ego, my ass feel my balls big, so I still go inside and order my shake. Now, way inside to order my shake, the young boy come back with two more cab drivers to whip my ass. So this oh, gonna be a man. Not me. My ass go out there and tell them all. I'm gonna beat your ass first. Told the, it was a woman too. I, I said some bad <laughs> things. I will not stay on there because I want all our women's sponsors to come back. And I said, <laughs> Remember, this was a long, long time ago when I was eight. <laughs> So I tell the lady first what I say to her. She bounces out. Now the older Latino dude in there. I said, Poppy, you want this? I ain't say smoke. Whatever it was the word at the time. I said, you want it? He said, Poppy, no beef with me. He leave. Now I tell the young boy. Now it's me and you again. And now the crowd goes crazy again. Yo, the old man pumped your friends. I go back into the crowd. <laughs> yelling, I'm not fucking old. Right? So, so now the young boy gets scared again. He leaves. So I grab my shake thing. I'm all gangster walking like, yo, I got them young motherfuckers. But now I go to the car. Only thing I hear is something coming down the street. Now, remember, I'm talking to my my, my girlfriend that my wife didn't want to have on the phone. So now we argue because now the date changed up. She didn't want to go because I got attitude. Right? I'm, I sound too hyper. I hear the car coming down the block. The ribbon. Only thing I do is turn. I'm sipping and I turn. And here comes that wild-eyed cab driver. He hits me. Boom! Shake goes everywhere. Shake is oh, all over me. I grab onto the hood. He drags me. You might know. You go from the side street into Rockaway Boulevard. He turns with me on the hood. Like, it's like some MacGyver crazy <laughs> ass. Like, he goes over the curb, hits the curb. The shake is still in, like, all over me. Spat it all over the floor. I land on the curb. The people start yelling. He's trying to kill the old man. And all that I do is stumble. And I'm woozy. I'm like, like Trevor Burberry when Mike Tyson knocked him out. I can't get to my feet. Spaghetti legs, and only thing I can remember yelling, I'm not fucking old. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that was a crazy, oh Yo, crazy that story, man. Classic. Hey, That's now, crazy. Is it any truth, this is all true shit, man. Is there any uh, truth to the rumor that you went back there looking for him for like two or three days straight? Is that yes, true? That, that's absolutely true. I was going to kill him. Anybody knows <laughs> that? I, was, I went to the cab stand trying to figure out what cab stand it was. <laughs> thank God! I, thank God! I did not find him that night. It was just—it wasn't worth. It. So that, oh, that was, that was, that was uh, priceless, priceless, priceless. Yeah, Let me say something. It was worth it. It was worth it. It was just yeah. worth it for that story, brother. Yo, I know, oh, I know, man. Yeah, you got one. <laughs> Yo, so we got a few. Man, I want to talk about uh, some hot topics, man. Lately, man, we got a uh, in the news lately was a uh, Fifty Cent, and he came out to talk talking about uh, voting for Trump because of his taxes. And um, what do you guys think about his statement? And to me, it was a selfish. It was a selfish statement. But what do you guys think about what he said? He's a selfish dude, man. You know what I mean. But we always knew that about Fifty. He never had to be anything else. He never promised or portrayed to be anything else. He's self-interest. And I mean, there is. And to me, there's a school of thought that should be like, listen, if everybody voted in their own best interest, you know what I mean, it would be a lot more clear. You just have to be clear about what your self-interest is. Now he's obviously not an ally, so I can't fool with him past his politics. You know what I'm saying? But, but um, you know, you can't listen. You you, you can't argue too much with it. All you can do is just you know acknowledge it. Say okay, all right, no, you got it. Uh, it is what it is. You know. Well, let me yep. let me say this. I I have to say this, and I I know this is gonna sound foul coming from New York and being born in Queens. I'm tired of 50 cents. I'm not, and not even about this, just in general. I've never seen a person, this is just my own opinion, who is so afraid of being irrelevant that yeah. every a week doesn't go by. You know, I looked at his trajectory. He comes out with a classic album, his first one out of the gate, and it's tough when your, your first album is your best album. He comes with this 
And and after that, think about it. His music has always declined. He's never reached that level again, of course. But he constantly just wants to be. I think he'll say anything. He will. He's just the world's greatest antagonist. And mm-hmm. I mean, to me, you know, if anybody makes their decisions based on what Fifty Cent is saying, or any entertainer for for that matter, nobody cares about your politics because it's just your politics. Yeah, and and I'll be honest with you, if you are a multimillionaire, then it would behoove, behoove you to vote for whoever will protect your taxes, except for the fact that if you had a fan base of people that supported you and you know their struggle and you know how they have been you know, systemically oppressed and things like that, you wouldn't make a statement that irresponsible. Yeah. And I know a lot of it is tongue in cheek, the whole, I don't care if he hates black people and all those different things like that. It's just irresponsible and it just looks bad. So one week you out at Burger King handing out hundreds of dollars to, to, to teenage kids and the next week you're talking about, you know, whatever, no different than the drug dealer that used to buy basketball uniforms for the kids in the neighborhood. It's just, it just doesn't add. And I'll just say this, 50 Cent to me will do anything to be discussed. He'll do anything to be relevant. And I'll be real with you. I'm surprised because dudes don't usually act like that. Like yeah. a lot of men don't act like that. And I, I just had to self edit myself. But um, yeah, the, the average dude, I don't know a lot of dudes that just spend this much time worried about everybody else and always interested in just, you know, trolling people. I don't know dudes like that, but that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some people I, I say, say you know, go ahead, go ahead, Brad, go ahead. No, that's just all I was going to say is basically, I remember when I first heard about it, I was wondering, is 50 Cent doing this to, like you say, to stay relevant? Because, you know, <clears throat> he is notorious for doing that. The other thing is, I think I said it before in the other, other segment, I said we all might be in the same game, but we're wearing the same jersey. Yeah. You know, 50 Cent is rich. The tax, the tax cuts and stuff benefit him long term. But the thing is that bothers me about these guys is that they are first generation millionaires. They they shouldn't be that attacked, detached from the hood. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They 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 have been poor before, so they should they should understand. They should they should have a little bit more sympathy instead of just worrying about themselves and their pockets. And let's face uh-huh. the facts. Even if they took, well, I think he was saying that it was 62 percent in New York, where the reality of it is, if he's got a good accounting or whatever, they're gonna find deductions and write offs to help 50 cent. With his um taxes and stuff, so he yeah. wasn't paying. Right. Oh, all, he need, all he needs to all he needs to start donating a little bit more so he can write off some stuff on the side. Right. The, like the thing is, you know, you know rich people they, they they maximize their deductions, and that's basically yeah. all they're gonna have to do. Because what? Okay, is, let me ask you Everybody over four hundred thousand. Every everybody over four hundred thousand. Biden said he's gonna tax at a higher rate. Correct. Mm-hmm. Something. Yep. Something around yeah. that number. Yeah. 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 So the thing is, yeah, people over four hundred thousand, they're just gonna maximize their deductions. You know. Well, let, let me ask this question: If if, if a person is 20 years old, what do they know 50 Cent has? The show Power. And power. Yeah, power. Somebody wrote, oh, somebody, somebody, somebody said nobody's going to stop watching Power. Like, yeah, I think yeah. I think the shows became trash. So, like, Well, first of all, let me say this. I'm going to just be honest with you, and I don't know what I'm, the view in public perceives me as. Maybe I look like, I don't know, a dude that's disconnected. I watched that. My niece asked me to get stars for Power when it came out. I saw an episode. I think I watched one episode, which is one more than I watched the big Empire. I got through half of that. But the episode of, of Power that I watched, the the DA was dating the biggest drug dealer in the world, and everybody knew it but the DA. That was my first and last episode of Power right there. <laughs> and, and the writing was so horrible. And, 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 and everybody thought it was Shakespeare in the Park. And I'm like, y'all looking at this like it has some type of profundity. This is absolutely ridiculous. So I guess I shouldn't say that publicly. I thought it was, I thought it was just, the show was just terrible. I thought it was just very, very weak. And it bothers me. I'm, I'm going to say this, and I mean this. From Tyler Perry to, to 50 Cent, whoever, they make too much money. Mm-hmm. to have this level of writers working for them, really. To, to me, you just throw anything at the black community and we just supposed to accept it. They could do better than that. And Tyler Perry know he wrong. And let me tell you something, I am a Christian and I go to church. I get no entertainment out of watching the, the church ladies with the hat and all the every stereotype and all that stuff like that. You can see that on a Sunday. And so I know he's made a billion dollars doing it, but they could write better than this, really. They get, mm-hmm. the, writing should challenge you, make you think of something, stretch it, but the usual, stuff i mean it's the same shtick to me but um yeah i, I just the reason i asked what, what you would think of him because get rich or die trying i think dropped in 03 
And so he's not known for the music. And I think the music couldn't sustain him. I think what happened was 50 Cent had a great story and that was getting shot and surviving it. And then after that, it just, it wasn't of, of interest. So it just became this thing. He, you know what it is? He's the, he's the, the, the Reggie Miller looking for a Spike Lee. That's why, you know, every single time he tried to drop an album, one problem is the time with, we had beefing with Cameron. And, and then the first thing was Ja Rule. And so his formula was the Ja Rule thing, a Murder, Inc. thing made him big. He could never find that again. And that's why for years he antagonized Jay-Z and Jay-Z would never bite. He always wanted to get in something. He used to call Jay-Z everything he could call him and he would just never bite. Because yeah. if you're not on that person's level, they shouldn't reach down to you and help you. Why would they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's real. That's real. That's real talk. Yeah. So we had uh, Diddy also talking recently, uh, you know, talking about the racism and all that kind of stuff like that. And I think it's going to be a race war. And before he's like holding back your vote, any thoughts on what Diddy said over the last week? What did he say about holding back the vote? Like before, it's like, you know, same thing as on the Ice Cube thing. Like, you know, hold back the vote, make them earn your vote, stuff like that. And I, I could dig that. But he also was talking about getting prepared for like the race war and if, if Trump doesn't win and all this, 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 get, Let me just say this, and I know I've, I've, I've spoken more than I spoke in previous episodes, but I just have to get this off my chest. This idea of holding back the vote. So let me ask you a question. What's the alternative to that? There is so this, 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 this is the way I look at it. So, and I want to pose this question to you all, and, I, and I've been saying this and thinking this a lot. So you have two choices here, okay? In my example, my hypothetical, mm -hmm. you have two choices. One of these two people are going to be elected. The first person, their platform is if they get in office, they're going to punch you in the face a hundred times a day. The second person, if they get in, they're going to punch you in the face 50 times a day. Now, you say, you know what? I don't like either of those scenarios. Mm -hmm. Which one are you going to vote for? You say, I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'll just let it go. Whichever way it comes out, I'm fine. Which which way are you are are you gonna vote? Which, which way are you gonna go? But see, that's the key. I, you know, think, you have to feel like if you feel like you only have those two choices, then you're gonna choose the lesser of two evils, which is the fifty right. times. Right. You know what well, I'm saying? Right, right. But when you say I'm not gonna vote at all, now you roll in the dice. Not sometimes if there's a time to roll the dice. Sometimes you know what I mean, according to people. So you know, listen. I think I think um I think Diddy. What he can do, the best thing I heard from him was when he was saying that starting another political party. That was the best thing that came out of that conversation for me. You know what I mean? It's just like, okay, cool. He's one of those people who could start another, like, legitimately start a new political party. And that party could maybe be, maybe, uh, can just maybe explain things or explain the issues or whatever to people. You know what I mean? And you can kind of start from there. You know what I mean? But you know, I, I but listen, I didn't know there was this many Trump supporters. In but, but Derek, let me ask you yeah. this question. And you may not know the correct answer. Is is Faith Evans rich? Is Mace rich? Nah. Is Mace rich? In other words, everybody that's been associated with Bad Boy work at my job, okay? At the end of the day, <laughs> I'm saying at the end of the day, this this idea, I don't know how people just get nominated to be black leaders. Or something like that, because at the end of the day, but you just said it. They got nominated. The way he oh, managed, but I'm saying the way he managed his company and his people, and the backlash from a lot of things that he did, and the way he treated people. I mean, it it just looks bad. It just does. What makes you trust this person? That that's what I'm saying. What makes you know? I'm not saying that you do, but I'm saying what makes us. You know what I mean? I, you know, I saw um when uh, they did the Grammy thing. And Puffy got up and he was like, you know, it stops right now. All of this stuff stops right now. You, you know, y'all cheated Michael Jackson. Y'all cheated Beyonce. And they did. But right. at the end of the day, these industries that you've been in bed with, both literally and figuratively, um, all right, edit that part out. I'm sorry. What I'm saying <laughs> is this. At the end of the day, you made money from these people. And then you want to come in front of your people with this stance, and it just doesn't seem believable to me. It just doesn't. Mm -hmm. We we all realize that basically the black community votes for the least race can, racist candidate. You know that's how we basically always vote, except for the two times, the two terms that Barack Obama ran. But I, I, I that's should, how I should have, I should have, can I bridge that for a minute? Go ahead. The, the least vocally racist candidate. All right? Yeah. 
Yeah, but yeah. the thing is, as as the black community, you know, we have a vibe in a sense. You know, it's hard to trick us to a certain degree. You know what I'm saying? We we know who's going to do us in the yeah. least. And the thing is, like I said, except for the two terms that Barack Obama ran, that's how the black community votes. They vote for the least known racist candidate. That's how that's how yeah. it basically is. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, I mean, I don't, I don't see that. Don't see a change. As far as the race, as far as if I think there's going to be a race war, no, I think there might be continue to be racial incidents. But I don't think there's going to be a race war. Nobody that's just not going to happen. Yeah, well, not, not gonna I, don't, I don't think it's an issue of, of, first of all, I think there's a couple of things. First of all, I think a lot of people don't believe in government. Um, and that's why it's so important on all levels to vote. They don't believe mm -hmm. in it. So one thing you could do is get involved in it. And let me let me just tell you this, this quick story. I don't know if I shared it before, but I had a fire. When I had the fire, because of the COVID, everything is shut down. You cannot get any insurance money until you get a fire report called Nine Metro Tech, where you have to get your fire report from in New York. And they're like, they're working from home. They don't know when they can get this report. Insurance company will not budge. They don't want to hear it. One day it just dawns on me. I'm like, let me call my congressman. Let yeah. me call my congressman's office. I call a congressman's office. He's like, no, we don't do it that deal with that. You call your council member's office. They connect me to my council member. And I'm telling you, the, the man that I've been told that was out for three weeks, the man that I've been trying to reach for two months, called me from his cell number that day and said, I'm going to email you the fire report. This man, every time I call his office, they like, he out. Mm -hmm. I went to a council member's number and I realized they have different contacts. They are able to reach people that we can't. So right. we have to get involved in this process. It bothers me to see a place back in the day like Ferguson, where it's 95% black and the, 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 the police chief is white. We've allowed that stuff to happen. And, and what, what really gets me is, I remember coming out of Madison Square Garden one night, the night that um, Patrick Ewan number was um, retired. I was in the garden. I come outside, there's 3,000 kids lined up around foot action. And then I'm like, what's going on? Oh, the new Jordans drop at midnight. Now let some legislation come in to say something that we don't like. They had legislation started in Virginia that said if you are caught with your pants sagging without a belt, it could be up to a $400 fine. When I tell you dudes in the barbershop went off, when I tell you they was ready to march on Washington, <laughs> when I, so no, it, 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 it's not the voting, it's people don't recognize what matters. You have right. a cousin right now, he's 41 years old, um, been in jail before, he told me he, he never voted before. I'm like, if anybody needs to vote, you need to vote. And for the first time in his life, he just voted. That's you know what I mean? You know, just you, I, I just think you need to be heard. I think we need to be yeah. educated on that. And that's the reality of it. And this is a good segue. This is a good segue about to go into now. So we're going to have a special, our first special guest for tonight is my boy, my frat brother, Karan. Karan, he'll be on in, it's, uh, can we get Karan in the studio? There we go. Hey, my hey, coming on Ron, right now. How are you? Oh, right. What's, going, brother? What's up, my brother? What's up, brother? Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Y'all can hear me good? Yeah, got we, you, here, man. we got you. I got, got a question for y'all. Is every guest special or or am I just this No, special? you are you no, are you're super special. special. Yes, but okay, I appreciate that. I appreciate I'm that. glad I didn't answer. I almost answered that wrong. <laughs> 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 what, what they said. <laughs> listen, listen, uh, Ron, you, Ron. You know, you know, you don't you know any sponsors that might want to be on this show? <laughs> We need all the help we can get. We need all the help we can get, man. You know, how about y'all call your local council member to sponsor the show? What's up with that? I'm listening oh, to you. Oh, that's true. Oh, that's true. That's true. I, wanted, I wanted to add to that. Like, you know, people talk about, you know, voting for the presidency and all that stuff. But the most important votes is for your congressmen, your local politicians. Those are the people that get things changed in your community. Those are the people you have immediate access to. You don't have access to the president. First, you know hold on. Let's, let's get Karan's background. Karan, tell, tell people a little about yourself and what you just ran for and stuff like that. Okay, um, so check it. Before I even get into me, brothers, um, I, I must say, thank you for the conversation that y'all are continuing to have um, every week. My wife makes sure to put it on and we sit back, we rock back and just listen to y'all divvy it up. Um, in terms of let's chop it up, it is definitely barbershop talk. It's conversation that I'll be having with my boys anyway. So I really appreciate the fact that y'all have created this platform and continue to have this dialogue, especially around this time where people need this sort of content uh, to keep them sane and to also help them make decisions as they move forward. So thank 
all of you for thank what you. you've been doing. Thank you, thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Um, I appreciate it. I will send Karan's check to him. Um, <laughs> via, uh, <laughs> cash app. Cash app. Cash app. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, but you know, myself, uh, I'm I'm locally involved, like in in everything. I'm a local community gardener. I have a garden around my uh, uh, around the corner from my house with a bunch of community residents that are a part of it. I was the president of uh, the former block that I was on, the Block Association. Uh, I was appointed to the local community board. Um, I don't know if everybody's familiar with community boards, but community boards are local municipal bodies that are responsible for the enhancement of service delivery. There's 50 people that either live, work or uh, have a special relationship that are appointed by your local council members uh, to the community board. The borough president appoints all 50, but the recommendations come from the local council members. Think about that. Um, I now currently work for the district office of my local community board. So I went from sitting on the board to now being a part of the uh, nine to five operations of of you know, enhancing service delivery and what that looks like. Um, and then I, I got real ambitious and I put my hat in the ring to run for local office for state Senate to represent the 19th senatorial district, which encompasses East New York, Narcy, a piece of Brownsville, Mill Basin, Old Mill Basin, basically all of Southeast Brooklyn, um, black, black district. Uh, at the end of the day, and black, um, black, 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 black. You know, <laughs> you got your flavor of Caribbean peppers in one section. You got your Southern bells uh, that are up north. You got your people that you know, diehard Brooklyn, et cetera, et cetera. All different bits and pieces of the diaspora in this particular district. Um, and in a two-man race, uh, we came in second which is not the, the worst thing. Uh, we got over 6,000 votes, which was uh, uh, an accomplishment within itself. Uh, when we launched our campaign January 20th on King Day, the, the guiding principle and quote, the time is always right to do, to do what's right is what we used. And in presenting that to uh, the residents of the district for them to make a decision about the future, um, do they want radical change or do they want what has been the consistent, regular uh, status quo that you've kind of dealt with but are now fully in tune to? Uh, when we launched the campaign, we didn't expect a global pandemic to uh, take over our lives and immediately have to pivot uh, to a digital apparatus. It was one of the greatest experiences of my life. Um, and I'm married and I have a, a four-year-old. So <laughs> when I say it was one of the greatest experiences of my life, I truly mean it, um, stacking it up against those things because it was important for me to not only watch my four-year-old son in his face and recognize that um, I could leave him all the money in the world. I could leave him the house. You know, I could leave him a bunch of things, but if I'm really about something, I'm gonna leave him with a better condition than I inherited, not financially, but also a part of the community. You know, I grew up in East New York. I've been here since I was three years old. My parents came here from Trinidad, um, had me. Um, my wife has the same story with her parents coming here from Trinidad, having her and um, us being together, my grandparents being on the block over, um, understanding the intergenerational and experiences of, of so many people. I recognize that with the time being right to do what's right, we can't continue to sit back and just have dialogue about the things that are happening around us. It's not creating the the change we wish to see. Um, and I know Demond probably wasn't expecting that long introduction. No, no, no. I got, I got, I got, no. That's a good introduction. I got one thing. Since you West Indian, can you pop your finger like this? Like all oh, West Indians can snap their finger. Can you do that? <laughs> that, that there you go. Indian, you there you go. We did it. We did it. Yeah. Some, some of the people can't do that popping finger thing, man. We can't. We can't. That doesn't work for us. But no. But real quick question. So you said we did go into this whole new uh, online thing and internet. And one of the challenges that we had during this process, during during this time, during this pandemic, was collect uh, collect collect the data of the census. And the thing is now, like you see, like the Republican Party are trying to basically juke and, and, and scam us all out of the proper data and collecting of data of the census. And I know you're one of the big advocates of the census and you talk about a lot on your own personal platform. Mm -hmm. what, what do you say, what do you say, can you educate the people? What, if they, we don't get a good collection of the, of the census, what, what are we jeopardizing? 
uh, everything you see around you, the census, the the money that is going to be uh, dished out because of what the census is. The census is a count of all the individuals that live in the United States. That's regardless of citizenship, regardless of financial status. As long as you are in the United States of America, you are supposed to be counted. Um, and the, the, the simplest way that I heard this census explained um, in terms of just everybody getting it, you know, if there's 10 people in the house and only five of you are counted in the census, you, have, you absorb the amount of resources for 10 people, but they have you counted for five. So they're going to allocate the funding for five people you know, for the things that you might need. So just of various examples, uh, when you think about schools, um, you have your local schools around the corner for me. I, I grew up going to public school 202. If only um, five students are counted and we need the resources for a hundred, and that's, this is an extreme example. We need the resources for a hundred students because it services this great big area, and you didn't respond to the census, you are jeopardizing the future of your of your children. We got five textbooks now because you don't, we only counted five students. How are 100 students going to deal with just five textbooks? So that's that, that's the, the simplest way to think about it. But when you think about the census, the census is big money. You're talking about $675 billion per year divvied up locally for our communities for everything that you could think of. Well, basically, talking, all kind of stuff. So basically... By you not counting yourself in the census, you're basically throwing the community into a backlog. We sh we're short on everything. Absolutely. Okay. And traditionally, uh, we, because we, our history calls for this. So we, we, we haven't shot ourselves in the foot. Uh, America has shot us in the foot and lynched us and all, all kinds of other stuff. But um, when you think about the census traditionally, what's the response that you might get from your parents? You know, I'm not sending them my information. They, they're not going to know my business. You know, yeah, we're, yeah. we're real particular about yeah. our business, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. I, I'm not going to tell the government that um, Uncle Larry it has been on the couch in our house for the past six months or something like that. But Uncle Larry needs to be counted. Uncle Larry is riding a train at New Lots in East New York. Uncle Larry right. needs to be counted. Uncle Larry is parking his car when he's not taking the train and his car is a part of the erosion of and causing the potholes in the street. Uncle Larry's a part of all of that. Uncle yeah. Larry needs fresh food in the community. He, he needs fresh food from Country Farm. And I, I'm naming places and spaces that y'all <laughs> may not be familiar with, but th this is literally, you know, my my community. So Uncle Larry needs to be counted. Uh, not yeah. only Uncle Larry, but you know, your your son, daughter it, it, that might be away at college, but is is back home. They need to be counted. Um, and Demond did highlight this, but like we did a lot of work um, for the census in this cycle, um, and it, it is now since passed, but. You know, responding to the census is by far one of the most important things that you could do. And I, I'll, I'll close with this just to really make it hit home. Um, I, I just turned 30. Uh, so my 40 year old self, for those of you that filled out the census, thanks you. Because, you know, when I'm older, think about it. You know, Chadwick Bozeman, 39 years old. Uh, passes away, you know, we, we got to get more, more checkups. We, we, we gotta, we gotta do all the colonoscopies mm -hmm. and all the things that we need to do. I need yeah. to be able to do that right here in my own community. So if the funds are not there at those health centers, I'm gonna have a problem. I might put it off, put it off, put it off, and then be in a situation where it's no good. So my 40 year old self, thanks you. I have a four year old son, you know, his 14 year old self, thanks you for, doing the census because those funds are going to be allocated for the next 10 years affecting our lives. My mom is 56. Her 66-year-old self, when she retires, thanks you because these funds that are going to be dished out and, and, and doled out through the census, and it's not just a financial thing. I, I, would, I would definitely be selling y'all short with that. The census is directly connected to representation. So yeah. 
Yeah, I was I was going to ask a question along those lines. Like, what about people? You know, you have people with various immigration statuses. You know what I mean? And you know, it may be a little reluctant, maybe you know, to fill out a census form. How does the census affect them? Yeah, you know? and the brothers and brothers sisters are incarcerated because now yeah. upstate gets, upstate gets to count them. Yeah. yeah, upstate gets to count them. So um, that's the the thing about this system. It's never been really. Uh, used to the benefit of, of us. Even when we get hip to it, you know, they, they, they shoot us in the foot. Um, so in 1790, when I think the first census was conducted, we were counted as three fifths of a person. You know, even though we were whole people, we were counted as three fifths, you know, so this is the, the start of the census. Why is that important to note? It's important to note because a lot of people think, well, you know, what? how come the census is, is, is now suddenly important. It's always been important. That's why they counted us as three fifths of a human being because the connection between representation and the census numbers um, is, is, is so important. The South would have had more representation in the House of Representatives if we were going by whole people. Right. Uh, so three fifths was so that there would be some semblance of balance between North and South and the, the battle around slavery. You know, the, when you think about it, the census was a battle about us, you know, uh, about how we're going to count these people because it's directly tied to representation. Fast forward to where we're at now. Um, most folks are discouraged from filling out the census because, you know, you don't want people in your business, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, Living in a state like New York, I don't know where everybody's from or where everybody's at. Everybody, everybody in this room is from New York. From New oh, no, York. Yeah. Okay, cool. And we've lost, I think, since 1950, uh, like two seats because <laughs> of the the undercounting that has happened. Um, this census year, as challenging as it's been, uh, think about it. Census day is April 1st. What was happening uh, in the city oh. April 1st? Everybody was on the couch. Everybody was on the couch. Or sick. Yeah, or sick. <laughs> um, yeah. And when you think about um, how the census, how, how they, they send out enumerators, which are the people who come knock on your door, have you filled out your census? This was the first age of social media for the census. It was the first time the census you could respond online, which is wild when you think about it. It's the first time that you could um, call and 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 do your census this was the first time those things were implemented before you just had to do it by mail and we already know uh the <laughs> problems that we have with mail speaking of that right yep. so this last this, over the last few months as you've seen that we have had a lot of well blacks for trump last, we, a few years ago we had that same black dude that, that that jerry curl looking shit that was behind trump all the time his punk ass was out there all the time and now we got <laughs> now, now 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 i'm sorry we, i'm sorry i uh, will Sponsors, these are not the words of my other co-hosts. <laughs> but so now we have a lot of uh, people uh, and had, uh, that voted for Trump four years ago. That are black. The one we have uh, Trump uh, blacks with Trump again is out here and again. You got the you got Candace Raccoon Owens. Um, you have um, what the fat dude needs to be on the sports dude, Jason Fat Man Whitlock. Whitlock, oh, really? oh, Whitlock. Yeah, well, well, yeah. Whitlock. Him, you know, yeah. you got Kanye West calling him a god. Jesus, Kanye. So no. now, you know, how do you, oh. what do you say to the black Trump supporter? Actually, you know what? I'm going to bring in a special guest right now. It's my uh -oh. man, Damien. He's from East New York. He's from the hood. This is my dude right here. This is my dude. This, this, is my, this, is my, this is my dude. This is my dude. This is my brother and everything. I want to welcome, before we before you can answer that, bring in Damien. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, hold on. What's hold up, on. Damien? Hold on, hold on. You got to set me up here. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> I I like as listen, listen, as they say in the streets, they, as they say in the street, I had to line you up, bro. I had to line you up. <laughs> I think there's a difference between a Trump supporter and a vote for Trump. Okay, go. Cool. Let's explain. explain, explain what's, your, what's the difference? What, what's the difference? Yeah, I'm gonna hear this. I believe in the art of war, right? I'm a black man. I'm 45 years old. I love my community. I have a community center. I run a nonprofit to help. Brothers and sisters that come home from prison, it's called CMO Network. From the age of 19 to the age of 29, I was in New York State Prison, where I earned my master's degree in theology and ministry through services. But my vote for Trump wasn't for Trump. My vote for Trump was a test 
And I'm telling you, at 45 years old, this is the woke that I've seen any black people in my lifetime. This is the best time that I've ever seen us aware of where we stand in this country. So it wasn't a vote for Trump. It was just a vote against the, the, the bullshit that we've been going through. So many times, too many but you you don't think there's gonna be more bullshit by you voting for Trump? No, it seems like there's a lot of bullshit going on. Yeah. I voted. I voted for the bullshit. I believe okay. in a, a growth filled environment, and there's too many people riding on the gray. There's no gray here. I know people that don't look like me. That's not of my tribe. That don't spend with my tribe on purpose. On purpose. But for our people, man, we are so forgiving. I got a uh, the number one. The number one basketball prospect this year went to an historical black college. That never happened in my lifetime. That can only happen under this idiot right here. I didn't vote for Trump because I think that he would change the system. I know that the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So do you this think, system, do you think, they, do you think the young the young man because not because of Trump, but do you think because of the George Floyd and all the other stuff that was going on that and we started waking up to. The education of historical black because actually back in the day when i went to school with like and kelvin all of us around the same age in the late 80s when we started looking for colleges we had the, the biggest numbers of black people black kids going to black college because of shows like a different world you had uh school days and i think that was the awakening something happened in between that time that kind of changes well, the of black college well that's one way to look at it i see somebody here said a, a vote for trump is against my organization damon you know me you know i don't write grants you know, I get my money the old fashioned way. People of color have always been the number one spender and the worst investor. That's why they don't mind giving us money. They give us money because we're not gonna invest it in ourselves. So I'm not looking for the government to take care of me. That's not what I'm, I'm that's not what I'm doing. As far as the vote for Trump, I'm not a supporter of Trump, but the enemy of my enemy is my friend. If this system works perfect, my tribe still lose. So anybody trying to fix the system is not on my side. Trump is enough of an idiot to fuck the system up, and I'm with that. Sorry about Karan, my Karan, No, no. Hey, uh, listen, we curse. Our, spon our, our sponsors already left. I'm trying to work on it. Back. We, we get our sponsors back. I got I got a mess of things a, a couple of episodes ago. So, but Karan, you, Karan, Karan, you look like you was about to say something. Yeah, uh, uh, there's a lot going on. Um, Yo, it's a pleasure to meet you, man, because uh, DeMond gave me a little backdrop and was like, yo, we're going to have this conversation, da 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 And I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. I I don't think it's going to be no beef or anything like that. At the end, yeah, but something you just said really, really piqued my interest about, like, you know, you don't necessarily want to vote for folks that are going to fix the system because the system is designed to essentially oppress us, um, et cetera, et cetera, and, and run it the way that the system is supposed to be. You don't think what um, Trump has done is, like, he's not running the system the way it is? Because when you think about the system that we are under, it's a capitalist system, um, they believe in white supremacy, they believe in, in essentially the, the, the white apparatus superiority etc cetera, etc cetera. um you don't believe that he's still functioning the system the way that it's it's designed to oppress us like of course i think he's functioning the system all in but one aspect there's no secrecy so those individuals that's telling him hey you can't do that let's do it like this now he's like nah we're gonna be straight up about it so it's almost like imagine your sister dating somebody that's not good to her We've been dating America, and America has not been dating us. So if I'm talking to my sister, I'm going to tell my sister, yo, stop dating somebody that's not dating you. It's all there. Stop talking about he love you. Stop talking about he makes you happy. The facts don't have no feelings. And the fact says America does not care about my tribe. And every time I fight and try to sit at her table, she changes the rules or takes what I have. So even if I played the rules, she takes it. Look, do your research. Self-educate. You got Freeman's Bank. You got several different times in America where we accumulated funds after slavery, after being in prison, and they still took it without anything. Yo, I'm taking this. Fuck that. So why would we still try to play the game with them? We've all been single, right? We've all been single, and women have access to those five words. What are we doing here? Trump gave us the answer. You can't do no worse than me. 
Why? People ask that question. What are we? A woman will ask you, what are we doing here? Why? Because she want to know what is she supposed to do now? We know exactly where we stand with America and we still try to sit at our table and say, please help me. But when you vote, when you vote for that, you are supporting to keep us in a certain place. No, what I'm doing is backing you into a corner. I am an agent of change. I am someone who changed my life and I help others change their life. Most people, 90 percent only change when they back against the wall. So he, so what I'm hearing is that you um, you you are you're, you're like Trump in the sense that Trump is a nihilist and he is a disruptor. So you are voting for him on that, uh, you know, on that qualification. Him is a disruptor and you wanting to just completely destroy what's going on and be a disruptor. Or whatever. Yeah, that, Trump is this it. whole thing needs to be torn down and Trump is the best agent to do that. The, the, the only place you put in a new system, if the other system is gone, you can't place a new system while a system is here. So let me let me just take something. Uh, I'm going to take some power away from this conversation. Mm -hmm. Right, because we, we get we're going down a bunch of philosophical paths right now. Mm -hmm. None of us in this room have ever voted for president, ever. Right, we all live in New York State. New York State is democratic by nature. My brother, you, even though you voted for Trump, you really voted for the electors that are supposed to cast their vote for Trump. Living in New York State, you basically threw it down a well. Um, and I, I say that respectfully, of course. You threw, right, no. a, yeah. you, you threw it down a well because yeah. the electors in New York State are going to be Democratic. You I'm can look up your electors. Um, oh, one of them you might know, Bill Clinton, is an elector for New York State, you know, where he votes for president December 14th, I think is the random date that uh, the, the country put in place uh, where those votes are going to be cast. And it's, um, I forget the number of electors. With, 29, because uh, I believe that's how much it correlates to the census, et cetera, et cetera. But we have 29 electors as a state, which is tied for third um, in terms of how they try to get to the number of 270. So it, I, I get what you're saying from a philosophical standpoint, but it really does nothing when we think about well, it with how the system functions. You didn't do playing. anything, bro. You, no, you, no. you really didn't put him in place. But, you know, but, you but, really, um, I, and, I, and, and you, you know what? Can I can I can I, I chime in? Go ahead. Kelvin, go ahead. Kelvin, go ahead I, Kelvin. You know, you know, I think in, in this 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 conversation has really, really helped me understand something. Trump gets credit for being an idiot. And that because I was trying to figure out why people would vote for him. Because I was like, you know, I remember initially it was this thing about I'm going to drain the swamp, which he fired more people in three years than I've seen in my entire life in about 10 administrations. So in other words, he doesn't get credit for what he knows. He gets credit for what he doesn't know. He gets credit for what he doesn't do. And so now you made me understand a lot of that. So what, say, what you said in essence was you think he's an idiot and you in turn aligned yourself with the idiot. And so now I understand that. So that makes a lot of sense. Because I used to wonder, I was like, when I see the man, I think nothing intellectual. I think nothing, you know, um, thought provoking. I think a man that knows nothing about foreign policy or foreign affairs. And then um, I hear tonight that because a young black man decided to go to hysterically black college instead of going to a regular D1 school, which he really much, pretty much did that on the strength of George Floyd dying and yeah. did not attribute any of that to Trump, but Trump gets credit for that. So now I want to thank you because you made me understand the nonsensical. And I appreciate you for that because I was looking at it wrong. I was thinking it had to do with logic or common sense or intellect. And now that none of that is in play, you're right. He becomes the perfect candidate for certain people. And that makes a lot of sense. So I appreciate that, my brother. You you just you just helped me understand. I've been struggling with this for three and a half years, and now you brought some clarity to it. So if you are an idiot, then then some people will vote for you because of that idiocy. And that makes a lot of sense now. And now I get it. So, so thank you for that. Because I didn't get that before, and that makes a lot of sense. My my question for you, D, is uh this: like you know, with the black people, like COVID COVID nineteen destroyed our community. Like when they said white people get a, a cold, we get the flu, and it, it it's shown this year because our neighbors, like we were talking a little while before, before about like with the census and stuff like that. In my neighborhood, I say one one four three six zip code in Queens. We don't have an urgent care. 
No, it wasn't me. I had to go to White Navy. I got to had to go over to Howard Beach to get an urgent care. Right. Uh, so, so what now with COVID nineteen? How many? We have the two hundred twenty-two thousand, something like that. Two people yeah, dead. Two hundred twenty. And probably so many black people. How was he good for us during the COVID nineteen? And then I'm, I'm gonna ask you another question from a brother named Marshall in there in a minute. Well, I, I hope we have a transcript because I didn't say that Trump was good for us. Okay. What I said was, in my 45 years on this life, I have never seen my brothers and sisters so woke. Gotcha. So it wasn't about I Trump. Agree I agree with you. I, 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 I don't know what's on your, in your lifetime. You said in your lifetime. That's right. right. As far as the young man speak, uh, going to a historical black college, I did not say what I said was the situation. If we want to talk about George, George Floyd, I know that maybe several other presidents would have took a knee. It mm -hmm. took an idiot to not listen to anybody else and say, don't take a knee. For some reason, there's still black people here that think that America is for them. Even but though what, you're, what, what, you're, what you're doing, what, but the problem is you're mixing issues. So in yeah. other words, everything that happens under his administration does not mean that he caused that. So I yeah. say other day, other day I saw a young, other day I saw a young man help an old lady across the street. That's because Trump is in office. It just doesn't work like that. No, so I'm never giving him credit for that. Right, but what, what I'm saying is this: in other words, these messages come off mixed like that. That's what I'm saying. I've never seen brothers and sisters so woke. You've never seen a man get someone to hold his knee on somebody and kill him like that either. So in other words, what yeah. happens is this: and right side. Well, well, the rest of the world has it. The rest of the world has it. So I want you to know they could have done that with Obama in office and killed the man too. You know what I'm saying? So in other words, I, I'm saying don't give him credit for things that have happened just because it happened to happen in his administration. That's what I'm saying. But if you say that, I was, I, in other words, what I was saying was this. I realized he doesn't have to do anything to get your vote. That's what I realized. In other words, you feel he's an idiot and you voted for him. So that makes a lot of sense because I used to wonder why people voted for this man who said, I'm not a politician. I don't have a record. Now he has a record and he has a failed record. But again, people say being an so, idiot is, so, is a positive. I didn't know that. I thought it was a negative. Kelvin, you just said he got to vote for being an idiot, right? I so Kelvin, I asked you to put Trump's record against America's record. What's the difference? Put it into context. What is, America what is, as a country. What have they done for your tribe, America as a country? That was so wrong that Trump did not do the same thing. America. In other words, in other words, I get what you're saying. So in other words, if somebody treats me bad and somebody else treats me bad, I just need to just vote for somebody else bad just because I've been yeah. treated bad. Yeah. Correct. No. Bro, just bro, just get comfortable with being treated bad. Just get comfortable with it. it That's basically it, what you're saying. If I could just add. That one line really like makes the the hairs on my neck stand up about like you've never seen our brothers and sisters more woke. And I, I, someone in the comments basically said exactly what what I was thinking. You know, when we think about our brothers and sisters being woke, like this era of social media makes it seem, I guess, a bit more sensationalized than it is. You, when we think about wokeness, we're really talking about like raising consciousness and, and people being uh, completely connected and understanding ourselves collectively, if I could use your words, Damon, as a tribe, you know, recognizing mm -hmm. that we are all of the same and we should be supporting, you know, that connects to supporting Black businesses and making sure that uh, our um, apparatuses are raised up. That's what the, the Panthers, you know, the Black Panther, the Black yeah. Panther Party wokeness that they, they embody that when we think about the black political convention of 72 this was literally black people from all over the united states coming together to have this dialogue about like how do we participate in this political infrastructure that is the united states that was designed to oppress us and how do we go back to our communities and become elected official elected officials that really you know represent and do the, the things for our future fast forward even when we think about when crack it, it, is, it was it, in our communities, you know, there was uh, the black men's movement against crack uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, you know, that right here in, in Bed-Stuy and, and East New York, you know, so when, when I think about it, I, and I'm not going to give any more, well, no, I'm, I'm going to give you a chance to respond. I'm, I'm going to just finish, finish my statement with like, 
you know, these are, are prime examples of or really just small examples of what is a part of our history. There's always been a, a conscious thread that didn't need the worst extreme of, 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 of what's happening around us in our present day to organize themselves. They were organized because they were, they, there's so many other things that we have to face and, and, and fight against. And I, I know we're like moving on time. I wanna say this, you know, we can get caught up in presidential politics as a community. This is the time where everybody swear up and down they know politics. They watching CSN, CNN and MSNBC every, every evening that they come in and they tweeting random stuff about politics like everybody knows something all of a sudden. You know, um, I, like, uh, I'm not putting myself out there as an expert, but I, I also, I studied this, you know, I studied government and politics as an undergrad, you know, I got my master's in public administration. Um, I pay attention to this non, in non-presidential years. So my encouragement to all of the viewers and everybody that's listening is that next year might even be more important than this year in terms of local elections. We got 36 council members that are term limited. Council members, have more control over your immediate lives than the presidency when you right. really compare the two. When you right. want to see a change, you know, everybody used that Gandhi quote, be the change that you wish to see. You know, the changes come from those local seats when we are completely attuned to what's happening locally. So that's 2021. There's a bunch of term limits. So that's just the city council. Four out of five of the borough presidents are term limited. Just to define it, term limited means, you know, the... Eric Adams, borough president of Brooklyn. He can't run again in this cycle. That's why he's running for mayor. You know, Mayor de Blasio, he's term limited. He can't run for mayor. You know, when you think about it, the political landscape of our communities are about to shift in the, the most hard way. And most people are going to drop off the map after November 3rd, after they cast their vote, and then think about it in, in the next four years, 2024. Yeah. That's when you have Diddy and everybody else. They got all these plans close to election day. But in between years, where the hell are the plans? Where, where's the, 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 the founding the party? Where, where is that? You know, where, and why aren't you yielding to the people who are doing the work in between those the, the, those uh, presidential years, so we can get we could go back and forth in presidential politics. It's real easy. It's a it's a it gets everybody excited emotionally. But really, I want to encourage everybody to just t pivot their focus well beyond November third because twenty twenty one is huge. Mm -hmm. So so a lot of people like man, the chat was going off so crazy. I could, I could barely keep up with the chat. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, I mean, like, then talking about Trump to get people heated. I think Thanksgiving is going to be kind of fucked up this year, very well. I don't know. So, <laughs> you know, hey, hey, this is the thing that, that gets me. He's 45 years old. I'm 47. This thing about being woke, I almost resent that term. Like, I remember being a kid learning about Medgar Evers. My parents making me watch about the Civil Rights Movement and the Voting Act and things like that. Why black people, it seemed like, apparently just found out stuff when Trump got in office. And what is this woke? I saw Rodney King get beat with a, with a, with a club on TV on a video cam back in the day. It's like, when did we find, when did we find out America was found? When, when did we find that out? Like like three years ago? When did people find out America was found? That's what that amazed me. Like I didn't know that America was founded on racism until Donald Trump came into office. That that's what I just don't understand. That's what it comes across as. Well, I'm sorry, brother. Go it, ahead, Damien. It's always been there. D, I'm sorry, D, Damien. Damien, what's going to say? Go ahead. He wanted to say something. No, I'm, yeah, I'm just hoping the transcript and we could go back. Because David, we I don't said, have the transcript, brother. Just say what you're going to say now, brother. We're low budget here. We got more than the transcript. Right, right. Say, was in my lifetime, Karan, how old are you? I'm 30. You're 30 years old. What do you remember about the crack era? What do I remember about the cracker? I don't remember anything, but I can there also look at it. Hold on, hold on. I, I, I live my eldest. Hey, come on, crack stopped because Donald Trump was in office, by the way. No, <laughs> no, I was a warrior in the crack area. Mm -hmm. I was one of those guys that was out there that was selling to pregnant women. So I know the situation. Unlike anybody, not like anybody else, I, I run mm -hmm. on reality therapy. Mm -hmm. That's what I run my program on. So I know that jail isn't a good thing. It's not for everybody. But after 10 years serving in prison, it's some people that deserve to be in jail. I'm nobody that's oh, going to over for everybody. D, you know me. So it's I not know. like I'm coming and I'm pulling some shit out of my ass. I put my money 
where my mouth is. I put my actions. I put my body in the line of fire. I love my community. I love my people. And we all got to play different roles. I know brothers that'll sit there and it'll be a march and they'd be like, yo, where the thugs at? Where the gangsters at? And I text them on the side. I hit them on the DM and say, yo, come to me after you finish. And I tell them when the bullets start flying, you're not going to be there and I ain't going to let nobody call you out. So everybody got to play their role. Everybody got to play their role. I respect every, I respect everybody approach. Everybody sees it different. I understand. But for me, I don't believe that enough people in my tribe believe that this country is not for them because I hear them talk. I hear the things they say right now. And I got people I know that are able-bodied and ready to work, but they don't want to work because the government is sending them money. I got gangsters that don't know how to grow nothing. If you don't know how to grow, how are you going to be a gangster? How are you going to be against the government if you can't grow anything? If you don't have any land, if you don't Garden have any gangster. So, so my thing is, you just can't say it. You got to live it. You got to be about it. Yeah, but um, well, for, for your it. example. I'm, look, I'm not saying I'm right, but I'm definitely not wrong. So anybody want to respond to that last? Uh, help, uh, see, see, Karan, your mouth was kind of open, so I don't I, know. You know, when when I came on this program, it wasn't about uh, convincing anybody that my uh, the the things that I have is, is right versus wrong or anything like that. It's really to to put forth, um, you know, just my beliefs. You know, these are the things that I believe in, um, and me not being an adult. <laughs> or, or um, yeah, basically an adult during the crack era. Alive. It, alive. I was born in 1990. After the Damn, crack boy, era. Boy, I was a freshman. I was a freshman. After the crack era. Crack boy, was still around in the 90s. It was. was heavy. You know, yeah, so was. I, don't, I don't know why it was. It was, it was, it was big in the 80s. It was from like 82 to 87. Crack is still around now, but in the 90s, it was Not crack. Not like in the 80s. It was crack like that's that's neither here nor there. That's neither here nor there. The thing is, like, we got to stay on topic here. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about this. Yeah, it's it's talk neither here nor there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It plays my, no role. My, plays no my role. experiences and the things that I'm presenting is not necessarily coming because I've seen, like, I was a, a full adult during that time. I listened to my elders, the folks that have been around, the octanigerians, this, the, the, the sep, uh, I don't even know how to say this, the 70 year olds, the 60 year olds, you know. I have conversations with folks like Viola Plummer, you know, who um, helped founded the December 12th movement. Offshoot, Sonny Abubadika Carson is one of the founders of the December 12th movement. He was the, um, the, the, at the vanguard of the black men's movement against crack, going into crack houses and making sure that, yo, you're not going to sell to our community. That's not going to happen. So when I present and, and speak on these things, and because it was really just to come back the idea that you've never seen folks more woke. I'm going based on the history that I know from the elders. You know, I might be young in age, but I'm well beyond my years in terms of my experiences, what I make sure I absorb. So when I, as we pivot back to what we're talking about in terms of everything politically, you know, I'm, I'm again encouraging folks to really take the local stuff seriously. And on the local level, here's, here, I'm gonna just put y'all on some game real quick. Right at the local level, you don't have someone overt like Trump. You have nothing but Democrats in Brooklyn and Queens. You know, so you think everybody's good. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Everybody yeah. comes from a different. Uh, uh, yeah, everybody comes from a different yeah. branch of the quote unquote Democratic tree, and everybody almost everybody comes from a political machine. When we're talking about political machines, you, these are your local, your, lo your Thomas Jefferson club, your, your this club, your that club that are essentially controlling and pulling the strings behind every elected official that you may or may not know. There are very, very few, uh, East New York, I think has the best example of elected officials who are registered Democrats, but are not um, put in place by a political machine Machine in Assemblyman Charles Barron, I think some of you might know him, and Councilmember Inez Barron, who are Black radicals to their core, come from 
outside of this whole Democrat democratic apparatus um, through the organization Operation Power, but I'm not uh, presenting on that, so I'll pivot away from it. But when you think about the, the Democrats that you have in office as your local council member, your assembly person, your state senator, they come out of these machines that put the party, the Democratic Party, over the people. You know, you I think so a lot of us have seen these extreme conundrums locally. Like, how could you vote for this project and call it affordable housing when you know our community don't make that much money? You know, these are council members voting for gentrification right. to change their community and essentially get y'all all moved out. So now it, when you when you look at black people, they either run in east, um, come or going into Queens or they're going down south and all the black people live in Atlanta now. You know, they, uh -huh. this, this is happening and it's directly related to those local elected officials. So why not participate at the local level? Well, well, the reason why black people moving down south is because of the good uh, chicken wings in the strip club. So I just want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> the living, the living pepper, man. Is, is, mm. Living pepper wings are hard to turn it's down, amazing, brother. Man. Yeah. But no, like, I want to thank you guys, man, for coming on today because we got to go to the next segment, man. Like my man D, like, listen, brother, you know I love you no matter what, how you vote, whatever. <laughs> you my man. We chop it up anytime. You know, we have drinks or whatever. Karan, you know I love you, man. Go mob, you my dude. Come on, man. I need to see you, man. Yeah, hey. you're both. Y'all both in the same hood, man. Y'all gotta, oh, yeah. gotta, gotta link up, man. Demar, you, you gotta I connect it. You know you the can't do it. I just wanna say one. I just wanna say one thing before we go, man. Thanks to uh, platforms like this and the internet, we start talking about this being us. This time being, we, we're being more woke than we've ever been. Mm -hmm. You know, think of the marketplace of ideas. You know, the marketplace of ideas is more broad, more inclusive than it's ever been. Thanks to the internet and platforms like this. So more people, you know what I mean. So 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 that's where we're at with it right now. That's why we're more woke than we've and it's good that black men, we go, like people, black people don't all think the same. So that's why we want to have platforms like this to show that we all are different. And so people that don't know about our culture and how we are, that we all don't think the same or certain exactly. things. Exactly. Not and, and, yeah. and I got to give D, D, I got to give you a lot of credit for being brave because you know what? It could be challenging to have different thoughts in, in our community when you think different people, you know, how, how our people can get. So, you know, so I appreciate <laughs> that, man. Anything before y'all get over anything? You know, anything you want to promote before you guys, this is the thing we use this platform. Anything you guys want to promote, D, D, you go first. Anything you want to promote, tell people about yourself, anything like that. Well, I got a fish fry on November 6th. Come on down. I need a new roof on the community center. Come on down. I'm going to fry some fish. What, what, day is that? No, what day is that again? Sorry. What November day? 6th. November 6th. Where at? Uh, 653 Skank Avenue. Come okay. see me. Are there any what kind of way they want to get in touch with you? Email, anything like that? Oh, yeah. You can email me at D more at cmo-nyc.com. How do you spell your more, though? See, that's the difference. You got to spell that out. Right? You... More. That's M-O-O-R-E, like the slave owner. D-M-O-O-R-E. Wow. Not to you more. I apologize for that. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's that's good. That's good. Uh, Karan, how about yourself? Anything you want to tell the people? Two things real quick. Um, for all my people that live in New York City, make sure you go to your local community board meeting. Uh, your local community board meetings are essentially where organizations, agencies, elected officials all go to to inform the community. Um, I already explained what the board is. You go to your community board meeting, get involved, um, join an organization, support an organization, uh, support a fish fry, whatever you can do um, to essentially challenge and create the change that you wish to see. And second, um, I'm going to do a quick plug. I'm a runner. Um, I'm, a, I'm a marathoner. Um, I do a whole lot of running through the East um, and all, all of our communities. Um, I'm a part of a team at Mid Strike Magazine. Uh, which is a digital platform that was launched through the uh, pandemic to essentially tell more of our stories of these everyday recreational runners um, yeah. that are black and brown. When we think about uh, Ahmad Arbery, he was a, a local runner, uh, just like we are, you know, and he had a story to tell. Um, and we want to make sure that we tell our stories because all these other platforms aren't doing it. Um, and once again, I, I think the the plug with that we got we got a bunch of electoral coverage coming up in Midstrike Avenue Magazine, so make sure you check it out. Um, but once again, 
thank you to all of you brothers here at Let's Chop It Up, because I think um, this is uh, another avenue where we get an opportunity to tell our stories. So I appreciate you all. And I look forward to catching up with you, uh, Damien. Yep. All, right. all right, brothers. Thank you for coming again. Appreciate you, brothers, man. Love you guys, Thank man. You. All right, man. Be safe, brothers. Love y'all, man. Go mob, baby. Go mob. All, right. all right. Yo. That was good. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Man, hold on. We got, we got. Look, Christopher, hold on for a second. Go ahead, bro. What you about to say? No, nah, I was just saying that, you know, this this platform is it goes to show you we pulled off one of the toughest things. We found a black person that was willing to come on here and say he voted for Trump. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. I mean, that's I not got, easy. That's not easy. Yeah, yeah, it's not easy. We had two courageous people last. We had Promise Batista and we Correct. had Mandy. So that's we had shopping for the career. And we got Kelvin came back, man. I don't know, you know, black people on the internet, you know how we do we Kelvin didn't pay that bill. <laughs> he had to go pick it. He had to go down to that check cash and spot and pay the internet bill real quick. No, <laughs> after after, <laughs> after your know. after your Trump guest, I had to go and just read something, just get <laughs> get myself back together. Kelvin had to go um, to script. Kelvin had to read scripture. He had to go back. <laughs> Um, I'll be, I'll be, well, first of all, what did you think? Well, no, first of all, let me apologize to you, D, for me thinking you cost us uh, sponsors, okay? So I want to say that. So I apologize for you. Um, very, very interesting. That That's, um, I, I think I may have handled it wrong, but I'm sorry. Go ahead, gentlemen. Uh, you don't have to apologize for nothing, Calvin. You know, yeah, the no. bottom line is everybody has the right to their view. Everybody has exactly. the right to their opinion. That's what this that's platform right. is about. Yep. That's what we're, about. We're not gonna we're not gonna shun away from that stuff that we're afraid to talk about. Somebody's yep. gonna come on here and they disagree with us. That's fine. Sit back. Yep. Sometimes you sit back and let them talk. Well, I have to admit, I didn't expect that. I expected somebody to really come with some salient points. And yeah, stuff yeah. like that. I, you know, like, like he got my vote because he's stupid. Like, I, yeah, yeah. I just didn't expect. Like, I, I mean, just didn't. It, he, you know, if he, if he, if he, like, it's like it's basically like the brother explained. He said, you know, this, this New York State vote is going to go. It's the, your vote's going to go Democratic no matter what. So basically, yeah. he's burning a vote. He's just burning. Yeah. A vote. Well, no, I, I think I don't, and I don't think that's the point because we we do that a lot. A lot of people have to do that. Is we know the electoral college is messed up and it's antiquated. It should be. What I'm saying is. I would respect, I, I know some Trump supporters and, and they're going to stand their ground and they're going to tell you why it's yeah. either the taxes or, or they're, they're done with politicians and stuff like that. That was not a great representation to me. It just wasn't. I just thought, no, no. You, you know, we went all over the world about, you know, th th somebody playing basketball. I'd never seen that before in my life yeah, and, yeah. and all was, this. Not, but no, no, it's Calvin, it, was, it, was no, no. Eggs. it was scrambled eggs. You know, what's messed up for me. It's Kelvin's wearing a goddamn Jets jersey, but that's another subject. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, touche, 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 bro. That's the law, bro. That's oh, the law. We out here long after. We got to sleep. Moving on to the next segment, we got going on. <laughs> you know, we want to talk about the challenges of dating, and today we have some more special guests. We have Brittany Holder coming on. Brittany, can we get Brittany out of the green room into the studio? Hey, All right, hello, there she hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. I think she's on, think she's on mute. Can we get, can we get her unmuted? I think she's unmuted. On Sorry, I'm off. Okay. Hey, welcome. Brittany, how you doing? Hi, guys, how you doing? All, All right, right. I, I see Brittany, are you still at work, Brittany? No, I'm not still look, at work. You look like you have Foot Locker. Okay, you know what? I'm going to get a little design. Doesn't mean I'm at Foot Locker. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You know, she, you know, that they she had to coordinate. She coordinated her house. Yeah. Do, Brittany is that. one of my favorite people. Brittany knows why she's my one of my favorite people, too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I got a, I got a soft spot for Brittany. And just yeah. so you know, you told the last guest that he was special. Sorry, sir. I'm <laughs> a special guest. No, no, no she's special because she, Brittany's my favorite niece. That's why she's so special. Uh, is this, is this, isn't she your only niece? She is my only niece. I got a granny. 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 I love them. Too. Okay. So, so, well, well thank Brittany. You. So, thank you for coming, Brittany, for being on today. And then, we very well. And the thing is, you know, it's a new era. This is a new era. This is it's challenges of dating. Like, my niece, she's in her 30s now. I can say, can I say that, Brittany? Yeah, right, I tell like, people I'm in my 30s. It's too late. It. Tell them, right? <laughs> good luck. Hey, y'all. Good luck. Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and Brittany, so what are some of the challenges? Like now, to me, you guys are in the fuckboy generation. And the fuckboy generation kind, kind of, it's us, we kind of messed it up because we the training yeah. young lads after. So our pops gave us the, our pops gave us game and told us how to treat women. 
But then I think we got selfish. And so you, so how, what are some of the challenges as, as a person in your, your age right now? Well, let me get my list out because oh, <laughs> there are so many challenges. Where do I begin? First, let's start with the fact that I'll be fair. The men have so many options in our generation. And I know that there were still beautiful women when you guys were coming up and dating. But now it just seems like back then women might have held themselves to a higher standard. Now the women is throwing it out there for a bag and a shoe. So it's just so many <laughs> options for men. That's number one. So if you have a higher list or you expect more, have higher expectations, they're not waiting around to get with you because it's like, sis over here has no expectations. I'm just go this way. Why would I yeah, wait? Yeah. Number two. These men think that they are the prize now. For some reason, they think that we are supposed to chase them and they no longer know how to date. I, I cannot tell you how many times a man has in, approached me, got my number, text and say, let's hang out. I want to take you on a date. And then they ask me, where do I want to go? And I'm just like, well, I didn't invite me to the date. So you should <laughs> you know, figure it out. Uh, it's so many different things, but those would be the, the major things. And then in my age group, Women of my age are now dating for, you know, marriage because we are thinking about families and children if we don't already have them. And the men, my generation, they're not getting married at all. So yeah. I'm, I don't want to say so, it all, but a high right, number are not interested in marriage at all. So, so hold up. Before yep. we go to that, like Brittany's young. I got another special guest. Can we, uh, uh, producer Sammy Jammy, can you bring in Miss Monique Newker? Because we got a different, we got the younger and then we got Monique. Who's not oh, of man. our age yet, but she's right Are behind you me. Old? No, no, where's Monique? Can we get a picture? Is Monique camera not working? Monique is up. Monique, Monique camera not up. working? No, she's not. It. Maybe it's me. I, I see a I picture. I can't see a picture. Yeah. She may be in front of her now. Well, yo, yeah. I got a question for Brittany. Yes. Brittany, right. let me ask you a question. You say that, you know, men feel today that they want the woman to chase them, right? Do you and you say, do you feel like women have messed the game up for themselves? Like you said, by basically you're trying to basically, you know, keep a type of conservativeness. You want to be courted, you want to be dated out, you want to be treated right. And then you got Sarah down the block that's gonna basically drop drop it like it's hot on the first date. That's what you're saying you're competing against? Absolutely. That's exactly what you're competing against. And I've talked to, I have a lot of male friends that I'm just friendly with, and they openly tell you what girls will do for minimal things. So for them, it's like, if I can just get away with buying a girl a shoe and I don't have to deal with a relationship and all of that, because she's here for one thing and I'm here for one thing, it works. So women like us are left alone and single because people don't want to put in the work or men don't want to put in the work. All right. Do you think a lot of women's um, uh, standards are a little bit too high today? Nope. And that's the problem. I've been told that my standards are too high, but I feel like black women are always expected to lower their standards to get a man. And why should we have to do that? Men need to raise the bar and reach our standards. Like We can keep lowering our, our buck for you to be a part of our life. No. Okay. Because the reality is we are more independent. We are more educated. So we don't need men. We want men. So to want a man, I need you to meet me at where I'm supposed to be. If I needed a man, maybe I would lower my standards. But I don't need you. I want you. Oh, okay. So if the man the man doesn't meet, like, like you, how many standards you got? Well, that was my list. My, my standards list is a little bit longer. Let me get that. <laughs> what are you doing? So maybe the standards list is too long, Brittany. Is it too no, much? I'm, I'm being I'm being facetious. My standards okay. list is not that long. I feel like okay. it's you know very acceptable. And there are men that need it, but then you have to throw in attraction and everything else with that as well. Brittany, Brittany, what are what are some of the deal breakers? Good question. I had this conversation with a good friend of D recently. A deal breaker for me. DD closure is mom closure is bad. Oh, damn it. <laughs> oh, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> bad is a deal breaker. Um, I do need a man that has a level of exposure or education. Um, family background is a deal breaker for me. And you have to make make my salary or more. That's awesome. Now, now expand ah. on the family back. Expand on the expound on the family background, and then go to the salary thing. Um, I live in Baltimore. For those of you who don't know, so here you have crack. I was talking about the crack era a little earlier. It hit Baltimore hard. A lot of these men in Baltimore do not have 
mothers or fathers in their lives. You know, they were raised in the system. And that really affects how they deal with people in life. Um, so for me, I've been there, done that, dated someone, several people with that background. And I know that I need someone who matches my background where I come from a family oriented background because we just see things differently. Got you. Now, right. now, as far as your salary is concerned, um, he needs to match your salary. Match me. I never said that he had to completely be in some unrealistic realm of a salary. But I just feel like if, if we're not on an even playing field, we can't grow together. So I need you to at least be where I'm at when you come into the game. Well, let me ask you a question. If, if you see, what, if, do you believe that it's your responsibility as a woman in the relationship to match his salary as well? You know what no. I mean? You said no. as long said as no. Always, no, no, no. There's no the men, you know, we, salary for men is just like, you know, it's nothing. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, when you date a woman, it's like the salary is like kind of down or right, down. Because you know what it is? Women, we offer beauty, right? We offer a lot of different things. Men, you could get in the game with money. You could be the ugliest man in the world. You got the right type of money, things gonna happen for you. So it's a little different to me. Biggie said the best. I stay. I'm ugly. However, I stay Gucci down to the socks. Yeah, girl, okay. it's a lot of women walk around. But wait, but Brit Brittany, Brittany. Yeah. Now, is that does that sound a little pretentious? A little superficial in that regard? I mean, so 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 money seems to be the X factor, right? It'll it'll compensate for certain things because if it if it if it weighs that much, and I understand what I think is is necessary is obviously that a person can hold their own, that they could be independent. And like you said, they could grow together. But uh, what if the person just actually could be a teacher and not make what you make? I'm not interested. Wow. <laughs> so, so, uh, let me tell you why. There's two reasons. Number okay. one, you have to throw ego in there. Ego's going to come up at some point if your woman is making so much more than you. At some point, that could affect some men. And it may not, it may be unconsciously, but I do think it can throw a wrench in the relationship to some extent. If I want to go on an elaborate vacation because my my salary affords me to do this, but I want to do it with you, and you're like, well, I don't have that much money right now, that's an issue. You know what I mean? So it's more so of a lifestyle. If I decide that when we do get married, you know what, well, let's let me stay home for the first year and you continue to work, but if you only make if you're making twenty thousand less than I made, you can't support our family. So that's where it comes into play. I, I need you to meet me where I am because I've afforded myself a particular lifestyle and I want to live that with a man as well, but I'm not footing the bill for that man. So therefore he needs to meet me on the plain, same playing field. I want, right. I want to make sure let me, sure, let me, let me wait, wait, wait one second. I want to make sure Monique is chime in on this. Monique yeah, is a, Monique, Monique is my big good friend, like a little sister to me. And Monique, you're a little older than Brittany. What are some of the challenges? They see most say I made you seem good. You made a little older. I know your age, but I don't want to say. <laughs> what are some of the challenges you say with a woman of your age with some of these guys out here now? So some of the, the challenges are surprisingly, well, I'm 39. I'm not ashamed to oh, say. Oh, see, I didn't say it. See? Good it's black okay. don't crack. Okay good okay. black I'm don't crack. I'm fine. I'm okay. <laughs> um, it's a little intimidating, a little weird um, to like kind of date because I still consider myself to be young. Um, and some folks in my age group are already married and divorced. So that's a little weird for me because I don't have any kids. I've never been married just yet. So that's like still a little weird for me. And I'm finding that a lot of like I have a lot of well, I have a few non-negotiables, deal breakers, but I'm very flexible, very easygoing. A lot of men are really broken and it's having like big impacts like on the relationship. Like after you peel the layers of the onion and like these people are like broken into pieces, it like can ruin a relationship. So what that's one of the main things for me. People need to like take care of their mental health. Um, I never even realized until I got to a certain age that men have mommy issues, daddy issues, outside issues, work issues, like all these self-esteem issues and they have huge impacts on the relationship. So that's one of like the struggles for me. Yeah. I, I wanna sense. I wanna say something about, you know, go back to what something Brittany said. Brittany said that basically, you know, a man has to re meet meet her criteria and then certain things are deal breakers or whatever. Now, if you meet a man, because I wanna we wanna be look at this from two sides of the coin. If you meet a man that has all those requirements, because I remember a long, long time ago when I was young, and you know, I was young, ambitious, had a good job, good career. The thing is men have the ability to be able to pick and choose so when they have all they meet all those criterias they may say i don't have to come on come on to your ship i don't have to board your ship because i can get onto any ship 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, you know what I mean? Ways. Because the thing, it goes both ways. So the thing is, if God can meet your criteria, but he may be, in, him being in that position, is still, he has all the power. He's basically saying, hey, you know, I know I'm a commodity. I know I'm a catch. So the bottom line is, that's the guy that tends is, is going to be not too faithful. He's going to be um, what is yeah. saying. The no. men could be sleeping on a mama couch and they still not going to be faithful. So no, I, I'm that. talking about just the guy that meets your criteria. Like if he's got all this stuff going on, you got to realize that he's going to be able to be to have the pick of the litter. You know what I'm okay. saying? Especially so in this should show. I be afraid of that? Or no, no. Of I'm that just I'm just saying it's from both ways. It goes both ways. So the thing is, if he meets all those criteria, he's got all those things going on. Men that that have all those things going on, they know they have it going. On. So they're going to be able to be able to say, well, you know, I don't have to pick you. I can pick 15 things. And if you don't abide by my rules, I'm going to go on and do go down to Sarah's house. You know what I mean? But she did start by saying that one of her issues is that men have too many options. So that kind of. Yeah, that. that's true. And that's, well, not all men. Not all men. No matter not where they lie on my list, all men have options because there yeah. are a lot of women. And I don't want to use the word desperate, but they are seeking relationships they are seeking marriage they are seeking family so they're going to accept a lot so yeah. all men have options regardless where you fall financially i do i agree with that i think all men do have certain options but i still always think there's levels to everything like if we're talking just about your level in your level like if that guy has all those criteria, that guy's going to be hard in the back to me to me i always when i would look I'm for not a relationship I don't need to bag him. He needs. I'm to just bag making him. a statement, Brittany. I'm just making no. a statement. But, but but Brittany, I think what what could happen though, you could potentially miss out on somebody. That's what I was that was great. To I'll, I'll just share share something. There was a, a gentleman I knew of who started, and he didn't. He couldn't figure out what he wanted to do in college, and he wound up working at a mattress place selling beds. And his wife got with him. That same gentleman is one of the most successful attorneys in the history of the United States now and is probably about two hundred thousand dollars short How of being a of, of being a, a billionaire. They were in college. Okay. Billionaire. Almost I'm a billionaire. I don't that I could have done that in my twenties. I agree. In your twenties you are not mm -hmm. a picky because you are still trying to figure out your life yourself. But as we know women sometimes mature a little and I won't say men that I know my age haven't matured and figured out their careers, but I'm in a different part in my life. So when I was in my 20s, yeah, you could preach that story to me all day long. But I'm older now, and I'm at a particular part in my life where I want to start my life. If Men are very notorious for not starting relationships until they have everything else in line. So I'm meeting a man that's still trying to figure out what he wants to do. That's going to hold up where I am in life because I want to start a, a family. But you're saying, oh, no, I want to get my career kicked off this, 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 five, six years down the line. Then you're ready to start a relationship and I'm old and dry. Ah. But see, see, <laughs> Brittany, see, it sounds like it, it sounds like you guys are more like opponents. Like mm -hmm. this is a us against them. That's what it. That's what it sounds like. And, and I do commend you on your standard. One thing it sounds like, much like your uncle, nobody has to guess where you stand. And that yeah, that's yeah. that's 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 very very good. That's noble because I agree with you because it's gonna go the way you want it to go. I'm just saying I can't tell you how many men I meet, even in New York, that tell me, "Oh, I wish I could be with Brittany. Oh, I wish I could be with Brittany." And they sitting there working at a gas station, and they know they have no shot. They so we will, we have to. Hey, hey, one thing Brittany better never bring in this house again is a goddamn dude to have braids. Some goddamn braids. Let me tell you, Calvin and Robin, that was a deal that I took, look, took my standard list and threw it in the trash and said, well, let me give it a shot. And it was the worst decision of my life. So baby, it was the braids. Y'all just said the braids. You can't. Yeah, 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 I will yeah, never yeah. do that again. So I learned from lowering my standards. And I'm not interested in doing that because I've tried that. I, if I no, I'm not sure that. Then I could say yes, but I've been there. So, But, but Brittany, at the same time, if he does make an inordinate amount of money, he still has to make sure that there are other things that other checks and balances too. He's got to have integrity. He's got to be a good guy, right? And all those other things. Y'all asked me for my my um my absolute deal breaker, the deal breaker, breaker. right? Yeah, right. I got you. Deal breaker. I said it. Everybody, even the comments. Oh, the money, money, money. No, all y'all heard was money. I said, I'm just <laughs> give me some money. <laughs> hey, listen. So a guy hey, with bro. potential, a guy with potential, or he's on his way up. 
that's that's not at your place at that time. So you're not willing to ride up. What that potential looks like? Is he already in the pathway of his career? Yeah, they, 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 they basically he has to go through some courses. He's in the middle of schooling. He, you sit down, you go on a date with with him. He's telling you, you know, this is what I'm trying to get to. This is what my future looks like. And he's actually taking the course to get there. That's not a finished product. It depends on what I would prefer the finished product, but yeah, he's not talking, he's actually doing it. You meet him and he's doing it, he's on his way. It depends again. What what does on his way look like? Has he not gotten his foot in the door yet? Then that's too much growth. I'm not willing to sit through. If he's gotten his foot in the door, because my foot is in the door, I'm in education. I decided this career at 29. I did a complete career shift at 29. Mm -hmm. And I went back to school. I have my um, my bachelor's. I'm going back for my master's. I'll be done that next year. So to me, I'm still building, yes. But I can't meet someone that's like, yeah, I'm still trying to get my bachelor's degree. We don't equally yoke. Not at 31. At 25, that makes sense. At 31, that doesn't make sense for my life anymore. And I think that's the problem why some, it works for some people. But after 30, relationships don't work if you're not equally yoked mentally, spiritually, financially. All that stuff is important. And we try to, even um physically, you have to be equally yoked for stuff to work. Yo, and listen, Mo, and Monique, I see Monique nodding the head. Monique, do you have anything to chime on, add on to that, Mo? So um, as far as finances, I don't need you to, it will be nice if you can match my salary. Hey, um, Mo makes a lot of money, y'all. I was going to say, this is different. <laughs> <laughs> in New York, so her salary may look a little crazy. Mo, Mo, Mo's, a, Mo's a hustler. That girl hustler. You better, have a hustler. Hustler. You better be a man that's a hustler. I'll make it by any means, whether it's at work, after work, not like women of the night stuff, but like, you know, low side hustles, however I can get it. You have, you have to be willing to do the same thing as well. Um, if you make like half my salary, it's just not going to work because we live in two different worlds. I mm -hmm. think as long as you can take care of yourself, if we are living together and you can meet me halfway with the bills and still kind of court me throughout our relationship, I'm okay with that. I'm okay. fine. Hey, listen, before I bring our and next guest in. Bring... So, so, not that I don't have educational requirements, but um, so I have, a, I, would, I have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. You don't have to have that. There's a place in the world for everybody. Yeah. Um, there are different jobs to make the world go around. So like I said, as long as you can sustain yourself, meet me halfway, and still kind of like take care of me and court me throughout our relationship, I'm okay with that. Oh, before I bring our next guest in, Brittany, the dude you bring to my house but have no braids, oh, no, side, no side teeth missing. You saw other people home since then, and they did not look like that. So uh, we I'm have just all bad decisions in I, We're over. I don't know what happened to that side, that side tooth. Listen, you gotta have some kind of dental benefits. No, something, something. Oh, I never touched my ass. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> so you know, we got these, we got these beautiful sisters on here now. But I want to bring a young man, a millennial. So I want to get a different perspective on on the younger guys. Like, you no, know, Rod's out the game. D's out the game. Kelvin, he's he's single, but he like to mingle. You know, and all that stuff <laughs> I did for a long time ago. Now I'm out the game. So, you know, so I'm, 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 I'm out the game. So you know, so our next guest is my young brother Christopher. Christopher, can you get into coming to the studio, Christopher? I'm go. here, baby. I've been here for a while now. All right, <laughs> what's up, Christopher? How you doing today, young brother? I'm doing oh, good. Chris, you about to go on the look. You about to go on the top. You got some shot. You got shines in your mouth. Got your jewels. You not like gold, man. You not like the gold, man. It's oh only on the weekend. I'm gonna step out. And, and, and he got a, he got a, he got a leather coat on. So you know, black man with a leather coat. He about doing something tonight. Now you can yeah. call me Bruce Wayne, baby, because every time I step out, it's a dark night. Hey, oh, okay, 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 okay. I know you, you was listening to Enron and some of the things. So. And this is why it's hard. And this, and this is <laughs> oh, oh, wow, wow. So, so Chris, I want to get a, I, I want to get the young man's perspective. So what are some of the challenges for you? So you young, you single, you out there, you 30 years old and everything. So what do you, what do you see? What, what's the issues you find with some of the young ladies? Hold on, Mr. D. While I was sitting here listening to you guys, I made a few notes on a few things that um <laughs> I just didn't agree with. And I was wondering if I could just uh, jump on that real quick. Break it down, Chris. Go, 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 go Chris. Okay, so, me, Chris. <laughs> okay, so, Mr. D, you said this is the fuckboy generation. That generation has expired. This is now the who you fucking with generation. Because there are fuckboys <laughs> and fuck women out there. So, oh, it all, that, it really, so, what I'm saying is, when I say who you fucking with generation, it's like for a guy and a girl, it really it's, it's pick and choose. It depends on who you're dealing with. 
are you pick? Or uh, what does she bring to the table? What does he bring to the table? How does she act around her friends? How does he act around his friends? Is she gonna give it up to you for a Bergen bags for some Louis shoes? Is she gonna give it up to you because you got a nice crib for a nice car? Or is she gonna give it up to you because she wants to see the type of person you are and you gotta work for it? Actually, make you work for it. Not just you have to have this type of amount of money or come off as rich or well, um, well paid on social media. So I say mm -hmm. it's the fucking with generation. This is no longer just on the guys. Women are doing fuck action. Just look at the music that's out there. City girls mm -hmm. are promoting a whole lot of activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, remember city girls are very young, male. They're, they're okay. Okay. May, Cardi. Look at the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the music sets the tone. Yeah, they Mr. Didn't once, but uh, Mr. D, you once told me that you told you you told me that the music set the tone. If you look at the uh, the riots, right, the Ronnie King riots. What song was um playing during that time? Yeah, all um, the songs uh, fight the power, all the kind of stuff like that. You know, you're, you're, Look yeah, at this. Yeah, this yeah, ain't yeah. this ain't Sam Cooke or Marvin Gaye time. It ain't no longer about love. The women are saying, "Nigga, what you gonna do for you? What are you gonna like? Buy me this, buy me that. Oh, he better give me head, this and that." So now the women oh, are taking oh. that front of it, and now we have to combat that. Any sponsors? These are not words coming out. No control. Hold on. And then Brittany said, "Brittany said, hello, Brittany. It's been a while. I haven't seen I you. Know, so I'm, long. Right. Nice I'm all right. I'm all right. Uh -oh, That's nice. why I was hey, just hey, a boy. No flirting with um, my niece on this damn screen, son. No, no, no. It's all love. All love. Um, Brittany said uh. that." Men don't chase women anymore. I disagree with that. I think men do still do chase women. The chase just looks different. What is the chase like now? Is as far as in what are they post on social media? Um, you know how much money does he have? Is he buying how many bottles is he buying in the club? Does he have a section? Men don't do this for no reason. We ain't doing this for each other. Well, yeah, I'm not. You know, sure about oh, that. Oh, oh, oh. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that. A lot of them do it for. Hold on, hold on. They be they been in the section drinking a bottle with just nothing but dudes. I don't understand yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't get that. I don't get that. I mean, if, if you see a guy in a section buying the bottles with a bunch of dudes, then he don't got no ladies on his line because that can never be your boy. You know, like even Mister D, you know how I roll. What I'm saying is they do that. Dark night. No, 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 no. no. All the sponsors, I do not know how this man roll. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> no sponsors, no sponsors. All right, well, I'm saying they doing they doing that to attract women. When you buy, let's get a section or to get the bottles and stuff like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some guys that's like, when we gonna do it, we gonna do it right. We gonna do, we gonna do it big. So there are some guys that's doing it like that. But there's every time, most of the times when guys get a section in the club or something like that, it's always like, yo, come on, you know the honey's gonna be looking. Yo, the honey's gonna slide on over. So the chase is still happening. It just looks very different. Can and I chime in? This again. Go ahead, Monique. Oh. Chivalry has turned into buying bottles in a section. Are you kidding yes. me? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, and I Yo. think that also huh. depends on the caliber of oh, women. Thank you, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's what I said. Are, there's you know, levels. There's levels to different yeah. things. And, you know, it, 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 the thing is, let me ask you a question. This question is for Monique. Monique, do you think social media has hurt dating or you think it's helping? Um, mm. both. So I think it helped because you have a wider platform to people. Okay. And I think that it hurt because it's not social media. It's the people. The people don't have self control. Okay. Because mm. the thing is, too, I was talking to somebody that you know younger than us, and he told me that he broke up with his girlfriend via social media. Where back in my days, they were time, not in a relationship if they broke no, up. The they were no, they were in a relationship. But the thing is, it goes to show you the tackiness of the way things are being done now. You know, yeah, what I'm saying huh? to break up with somebody over social media is is tasteless. You know, what I'm saying, it but is. that's the new world that we're in. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that's why I asked you, did it did it help or did it hurt? Because to me, that's not a man. A man is going to break up with somebody. You break up to with a face or whatever you talk to. And to me, that's not even a relationship. Like you're breaking <laughs> but, up with people via social media. You're not going to call me, text me, yeah, 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 and have a conversation. That's not even a real relationship. Yeah, but well, they were in a relationship. The relationship was like over a year and some change. And oh wow! And that's relationship. another thing. The point that you two are making is that people don't really believe in relationships or know what monogamy yeah. is in my generation. Correct. So I maybe agree. once you all the monogamous things that come, I mean, all the things that come with monogamy, but they will never put the title on it, right? Mm -hmm. Because then it limits them from other women. So you have a lot of women who are doing girlfriend things and in relationships with themselves because the men they are with are not in relationships with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, I, feel you. I think also men don't sometimes put the title on because it comes with a sense of responsibility and accountability. 
if we are now boyfriend and girlfriend, if I am now claiming you as my woman, and then you go out there and make me look a fool, I have to own up to that. I have to claim that. I have to, that's that's fault on my part. If I didn't read you right, and I found out um about uh, who you really was too late into us dating or dealing with each other, and you start to show your two colors later on, then I got that's on me. That all falls on me. So sometimes guys don't want to jump the gun and saying, "Yeah, that's my girl." Nah, we're gonna treat it like a job. You gotta work for this. You don't go to a job and be like, "Yo, when I'm when I'm gonna get a promotion." They tell you when you get promoted. When you earn it, when you work for it, that's when you get promoted. Remember so when I said men Chris. think they prize now? That's it right there. You yeah, have that thing is, she's, no, she's right. Chris, I want to ask you this question. Do you think, do you agree with what Brittany had said earlier? Men have a lot of options. That's why they can do that. Women have a lot of options. So I, I don't, it, 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 it goes both ways. We don't, I don't know about that. Think women have I a think lot of options. These, these dudes are fucked up. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. If you, honestly, I've been in the dating game, I would say, since I was about 25. Hey, watch it. Oh. <laughs> no, since, uh, I would say my adult dating game. Since about 25, in the dating pool is slim. I have beautiful friends who are, you know, bring a lot to the table and for them as well. The dating pool is slim and they live in New York, they live in Baltimore, they live in different places. So the dating uh, pool is, is very slim, honestly. Brittany, it, yeah, it, it doesn't uh, exist. I've been out here for 11 months and I quit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's the problem? You know what y'all doing wrong? Y'all have never been to the Miss Black Awareness pageant. Now that's where you find good women. Clean, good, clean with them. That's and so I think it's kind of I think this is kind of a stretch, but another thing that I noticed is that a lot of males are now like raising themselves. So Brittany, myself, and Chris, we all are all connected connected to Damon. Um, Damon definitely um, influences Chris. He influences um, me. He's Brittany. Brittany is his niece. And so he gives her like a lot. So uh, think about it. Fathers, uncles, grandfathers, they are kind of extinct. They don't exist anymore, really. Mm -hmm. And so these men are kind of like raising themselves. Like I said, they are broken. Unfortunately, some are some reasons are their fault, some aren't, but they're kind of like broken, they're raising themselves. So I think a lot of them don't even know that, that they have common sense, but a lot of them don't know that they're doing like the wrong thing and that they're not but, approaching them in the right, the right way. Miss Monique, when you say, first off, how you doing? Because I haven't Monique, seen you in a Ms. while. Monique, Chris. Don't do that, buddy. Um, don't do that, don't buddy. Don't put that age on there. Put me, you know, oh. this in front of okay. me. Yeah. It feels weird saying it, but okay, Monique. Um, yeah. uh, I don't like it. Uh, okay. Monique, um, <laughs> Let me ask you something, because you, you said that twice. You're saying, like, there's a lot of men out here that are broken. Would you agree with me when I say there are women out here that are broken as well, but not tied to family issues, more tied to their past relationships? Absolutely. So much to the point yeah, that they can prove to them why, why, why they should let you be in their life. Cause, and, and then and, and they want to see if you're going to do – they want to see if you're going to get the, the, the one up on the guy they just deal with, meaning you got to be better than him. Why do I got to – Met, um, go hide in somebody I never met. I didn't do that to you. I ain't hurt you. So why do I gotta fix that bridge? Why do I gotta fix the pain and work that he put in? So in why, my why, why is it, it's just so many ladders that a guy gotta keep clean, um, um, climbing. Yeah. So in my experience, I'm not looking for you to one up, or maybe I should be looking for you to a few up. In my experience, but I know the mistakes that I've made, and I'm not gonna repeat those mistakes. And it doesn't yeah. mean that it's it's gonna be a one up or a one down. I just know what I'm gonna accept and what I'm not gonna accept. And when I I said, like you said, I said twice that men are um, broken, and I emphasize on that a lot because um, in the black in the black community. Um, men are kind of like taught to suppress their feelings. If mm -hmm. like only girls can uh, unfortunately express their feelings um, and males go through things as well. And so that's kind of been what we've been going through like as a people. And now it's coming out, like take care of yourself, support your mental health. It's okay to cry. It's okay to get mm -hmm. out. It's okay to talk to someone. So we're normalizing that stuff now, but we're still dealing with the guys who weren't allowed to do that stuff. So it's hard. So what yeah. my okay. question to everyone, yeah. is, to everyone is, where do we, where's the love part of it? Is everybody just dating? Yeah, just nobody dating said nothing about love. Anybody about I anything love. about love? What? Love? Mr. What's D, that? Mr. D, <laughs> Mr. D, it's so, it's so interesting you say this, and it, it scares me to say, um, it, it ain't no love, man. And I, and, and when you ask me about, like, how's it dating like for me, it's, it's literally like playing dice. I'm hoping to get a four, side, four five, six, but most days it's a one, two, three. What you know like, about free love? What you know about free love? Listen, Chris. 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 Listen, Ch
CeeLo's an old New York. That's a New York dice game. So everybody outside of New York, they don't, one, two, three is a loss. Four, five, six is automatic win. So Chris, Chris, how, Chris, how old are you, Chris? I'm 30. Okay, so these you two are both 30 years old and both say that it's not even about love anymore. What's coming behind you guys? Like what's 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 coming? What's the twenty year old thinking? Like shoot each other? Like what are we? Where are we at now? And I do agree with Chris. There used to be love in the music. Like like do men love and adore women anymore? That's the thing. Yeah. And I, I I get your point, Chris. Chris feels it needs to be reciprocated. It looks like you know yes. because it's still yes. you know what I'm saying. And and I have to say we must owe you apology because it's not your fault. It's the generation that raised this generation's fault. That's where the problem was. Because realistically, it shouldn't. Have, you shouldn't have inherited this. And I always yeah. believe that right now, you should. You you two should not have to be opponents. Years ago, a man used to have to go, and this is even before our, our generation would have to go to a young lady's parents or her house and ask mm -hmm. her out or show up. Now, ten women go out, ten dudes go out, and the guys yeah. go out and they're on the prowl and this, that, and the third. And women, so the guy is trying to bargain for sex, the woman is trying to bargain for money or position. And I think that's just, you know, somewhere along the line. I don't think that we're taught affection anymore. You know what I mean? I, 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 I think hundred percent, hundred percent. I wonder how much this is uh, the changing roles of like men and women as well. You know what I'm saying? Because like you know, you have women. You know that you have you have uh, wage you know gaps being closed, and women are uh, you know what I'm saying having making more money, being more educated, and everything. And it's a push towards that. You know what I mean? And I'm just kind of wondering how much of that factors into it as well. You know what I mean? So you know, I, um, yeah. that factors in a lot. And I mentioned it earlier. No woman, I feel, in, in, in the 60s and the 50s and the 40s, you need it. When Reconstruction was happening, slavery, you know, people were moving from the north to the south. Women needed men because we couldn't get jobs, like you said. Yeah. There, it was a different different era back then. We, black women, are the most educated subset of people, right? With that comes the higher increase in independency because we are getting the same jobs that men are competing for and getting those same salaries and fighting for wage um, gap uh, increases and things like that. So we no longer need men, but we absolutely want them. And I think when men start to understand that, then affection will play a role in it because I don't need you. you but but Brittany, me. Brittany, will you acknowledge that we live in a society that does not ingratiate black men? So the opportunity for, for black men in corporate America and certain things that may be extended to you all right. are not extended to men. Will you at least acknowledge that he may not have the same, he may have the credentials, but may not have that door open. They feel that they'll, they'll rather, white males always have had a use for black women. They don't have a use for black men. And they used to have it for labor and that was it. Because what? No. I don't, I think as a black woman who worked in corporate America, who's worked in uh, the corporate side of retail, and now I'm in the school system, so it's a little different. No, black, I, I think black males still get better opportunities in some instances than black women. We have to do 10 times more than the black, if we have to do 20 times more than the white male and the white female. I think black women are more successful than black men across the board. They yeah, I agree. I agree. Man, I don't think that's just for work ethic. I don't think it's just it's, work ethic. I also, think white. I'm sorry. No, it's also for optics because the the, the black woman meets oh. two two minority quotas. They they were black and they were female. Do so you have an advantage? Action, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Due to affirmative action. So, Brittany, you'll be able to get a job quicker than me in the corporate world because you fill two quotas. And that's what Rolling I see. Yeah. You know, you're black and you're a female. So when they hire you, and another thing too. They look at me and they say, yo, this guy's more timid and he's six and change and you whatever. I'm going to have problems with him. You, you're not going to give me so many problems. Exactly. And that's, that's what I see. So he winds up having to hustle and Correct. stealing my Red Bull machine. And that's what happens. <laughs> I got a, I got a that's how we get Red Bull machine teams right there. <laughs> I got a, con I got a controversial right. question for, for the lady. Do you right, feel right, that the dating... Wrap it up. Okay. Do you guys feel that the dating pool is small because you're trying to stay in your race? Mm. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, because the thing is, we know that, you know, it's hard to date in your race, and then it's probably harder even to date out of your race. Yeah, and statistically, we know that there's more black women out here than yeah, and black women. men, correct. So right. it's, it's, you know, it, I think it's something like eight to one. It's really ridiculous, actually. So the pool is a lot smaller because of that alone. There's just not a lot of them out there. So... Mm. Yes, I agree. Um, but 
I'm going to stay here and fight it out because I love the black man. I need the Matt Bland. I want the black man. And I'm not leaving. And I cannot bring some someone other than the black That's right. home That's to my right. uncle. There you go. That's right. Right. I'm going to say I can't either because this man right here is going to give up the business. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't do I'm that with D. Hey, hey. He don't play that foolishness. Hey, hey. She, she can't get. Is that me? She gotta get past. She gotta get past. My mama, my mama, my mother made me like that. My sister told me. My mother, and my my sister, and my father scared me to death. I went to Richmond Hill. There's only like seven black people. If I'd have brought one of them women, oh lord, she can't cook. No, she couldn't cook no collard greens. That no season or something. Man, I'd have been in trouble. trouble. So all you uh nope. black men on here who have a few years over me, I'm kind of holding you responsible. Help the younger black men get it together because I am. I mean, they don't listen. listen. They don't listen. They don't listen. Now, Chris, yeah, Chris, Chris listen, they don't listen. So I've been yeah. trying to school him for a long time. You know, he out in these streets. He in these streets right now. You see his background. You know, he's ready for the night. Okay. He already got the red cup. He already got the red cup. He's already got the red cup. He's already got the red cup. He's already got the red cup. Uh, he's, he's, in, he's in the bottle section right now. <laughs> right now, right now, right now, right now. Can I come in your section? Can I come in your section? <laughs> you better let Monique in your section. You better let Monique in your section. <laughs> you already know you've been in my section, man. Uh, you need to see the sparkles right now. That's what we need. Some crazy sparkles. I know. The bottle girl. No, you know? Mr. D, I, I listen to you, but like you said, sometimes I listen, sometimes I don't. I listen to you, but some things you really do have to experience for yourself. You have to find out for yourself because then I know Absolutely. how to move. Then I know why you said this. Now I know, yeah. oh, wow, you wasn't tripping. So mm -hmm. it's just like, I got to, and then I know it's just going to trickle down. When I tell somebody, they're not going to listen to me. They got to learn it for themselves. And that's yeah. all right. Yeah. Because yeah. experience is the best teacher. So that's true. that's true. It's nothing new under the sun. It's just the way we do it now because we got social media and stuff like that. And you know, and it's, it's just it's not like I said, it's nothing new in the sun. But I want to thank you all for coming. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just about to, the last thing I was about to say is like the, the one thing that I wish this generation could do. I wish this generation wouldn't be afraid to be like being vulnerable, being open. Like if you feeling somebody, mm -hmm. say you feeling them. If you want yeah, yeah. this person to yourself, say you want that person to yourself right now. It's all about nah. I don't want to like a sucker making assumptions. Nah, he talking to this. Um, he talking to this. This person. She talking to that. That person. It's like can we just find a middle ground where we can actually say what we want, what we expect, and can we bring it to each other? Instead, everybody mm -hmm. want to just keep pretending until the movie is over. Like it's, it's, it's right now, it all seems like a game. And we all playing, and it's like, it's like you well, said, well, um, Kelvin, it's, it's a big we, reality like, show. Black men and black women are, are, are at odds with each other because that's what yeah. it really feels like. Mm. It feels like well, 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 Nick said it best. A lot of us, a lot of us need healing. We are still dealing with childhood issues that we bring into adult, yes. adult yeah. situations. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us need to heal. I think. That. The first time ever, Chris, you don't learn me something. Being vulnerable is very hard. I'm, I'm gonna try it, but yeah, you just have to put yourself out there. It may work, it may not work. Then you gotta pick your 39 year old self back off the floor. And go back. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. It's really hard. It is. It is. It is. I'm gonna give it a try. Listen to you, Chris. You oh got man, you. listen, listen. Listen, I want to thank you all for coming on today, Christopher. Thank you for being, thank you, you know, very brave. Thank Monique, you. Mon uh, 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 Brittany. And Brittany, I swear to God, I do, but not come in no cone oh, no uh, no uh, no uh, uh, no no you, no nothing. nothing. You know, you know, and I feel bad for all my sisters in their 30s that got this, that's making all this money and can't find no good dudes. A lot of good dudes out there. My sister Essence, I see her charming in. She's a good sister. Like it's hard for him. So I really hope they all find some love. And Chris, I hope you yeah, find you love, man. So much money. You make it Thank you. I hope I find it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I pay I, I pay Monique too much money because Mo can't find no dudes on that level. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Monique's half Monique's half waypoint is a struggle for a lot of people. Yeah, you better be like Jig like Jigga say one of six nigga. Yeah, I ain't gonna say the word in word on it. You know what I mean? So you gotta, you know, I'm not gonna do that joint. But but now thank you all for coming on, man. Thank you. So Tell much people for like me. First of all, any, oh, anybody got anything to promote? Monique, I know you yes. get jewelry, tell them everything, and we can find okay, you and everything. I have two things to promote. Um, I have a small business. That's another hustle. I have a small business. It's, uh, I sell brooches, barrettes, bow ties, and other accessories. Um, the website is ilovebeat3.com. The Instagram page is shop.b3. Um, I also work in community. I work in social services. I work in East New York, just like the two brothers who were on the earlier segment. Um, we are having a healthy Halloween 
slash trick or treat food pantry on Thursday, October 29th at 127 Pennsylvania Avenue. We're going to have some really, 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 really good groceries to give away to the community. I would never give anybody anything that I wouldn't take home myself. So come on out. We're going to have some good treats and candy and toys and clothes and stuff for the kids. So that's 127 Pennsylvania Avenue, uh, corner of Liberty at the NYPD Community Center. Uh, Brittany, anything you want to talk about your show? Anything you want to promote? My show is on pause right now because I'm back in school. So, you know, for beginning of the school year, virtual, it's crazy. Um, but <laughs> PD in January, I'm going to come back to the show and then I'm going to have that show to promote for you and some other great things that I'm working cool, on. Cool, cool. Give First your page, Brittany. Oh, yeah, great. Um, only on Instagram. Um, I'm at it's ITS underscore just A U S underscore Brit B R I T one T. First of all, right. so I know you're doing your music thing and stuff like that. Uh, oh, yeah, but I'm not. The, the only reason why I'm not going to promote that because I mean I'm, I'm working on a new project called Confessions of a Sucker, written by a lover. But that's not going to be done probably until like the middle of November at, at best. So I can't even give a date on it. But I will promote what I always promote, which is um peace and love. And I'm I'm, I, I'm strong on that because there's a lot of people that's not experiencing peace. There's a lot of people that are aren't experiencing love or don't know what love looks like. So when you share that. Then give them a glimpse of it so they can feel it and so they can know how to give it to others. So peace and love always. You know, I love you, brother. I love you both. I love you. Love you three, rather. I love you, brother. So all right, everybody be safe. Have a good night. All right. Thank you. All right. Hey, one thing I want to tell Chris. Oh damn. Chris is still there. One thing I want to tell you. The bottles in the strip clubs are the mating call. So when you pop that bottle, that all the birds come flying. Yeah. That's when they all come out. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's, a, it's the bat signal. The, the, <laughs> the bat signal. All right, young brother. Be safe tonight, man. Have a good time. All right, brother. All thank right. you. I will. I will. Right, Stay up, young blood. Stay up. Man, this was a good show, man. Some good topics. I mean, the comments. Sorry, but I could not follow the comments. It was just coming there, <laughs> popping it through past. I couldn't get to all the comments, man. I was trying to, but the, the conversation was flowing, man. So I appreciate everybody even in the comments. That was really dope. Tell everyone to please like and subscribe to us. You know, we want to keep this platform going on. And anybody want to sponsor any of our friends, please hit me up. You can email me at Demond Pearson, D-E-M-O-N-D-P-E-A-R-S-O-N. If you want to sponsor your stuff and anybody else, you guys can tell them where they can find you at, too. On Instagram, it's Pearson 14 on Instagram. Well, I'm just right. a, da a daily routine on um, Instagram. And the shirt, the shirt. People like in the shirt. It was like in my shirt. So I get the shirt. Rod, tell them we can find the shirt at. If they want to find, if they want a shirt, black is dope. Just um go on Instagram, real life sixty eight brand, R E A R E A L L I F E brand. Um, no. I'm not on Facebook. I'm on phone book. If you have my number, just call me. <laughs> and um, if you see anybody with a Red Bull machine, also call nine one one. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yo, that's so uh, classic. If I see somebody with a red bull machine, I'm a, I don't even yeah. think I'm gonna stop. I'm, I mean, I'm just laugh, man. If I see that red bull machine going, down. Yeah. Derek. And as always, we love you, brothers. I love yeah. you, brothers. Oh, Derek, yeah. love, love you, you, brother. All right, listen. So, anybody, any topic, please hit us up. Tell us what topics you want to talk about. We love chopping it up about anything, any kind of topic. We love to have you as a special guest yourself. So, I love you, brothers. I see you next week, man. Peace and love. All right, guys, and stay black. Out. Peace, y'all. Be good. <laughs> Peace.